and welcome to episode 71 of Gamers of a Lost Spark podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Chesson, and joining me as always, it's the other spark on the pod, a man who feels as giddy as a 20-something right now with the release of Final Fantasy. It's the one and only Mr. Darren Whitten. Hello, how are you? I'm not too bad, I'm not too bad. How are you, sir? I'm really good. I'm very excited. <laughs> very excited. It, it, <laughs> It must feel like like 2005, 2006 to you right now. We've got Final Fantasy 15 is in our hands, in our Playstations or Xboxes. Um, and, and, and Lost Guardian is like a week away. Lost Guardian <laughs> must- around the corner. It's, yeah, it's giving me more vigour. I feel you're re- re- re-youthed. I'm, uh, I'm a 10 There's years a spring younger. in your step. <laughs> there is, every morning. And it's as if I'm back, back in the glory days. <laughs> <laughs> and the time is is nearly here. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? And it's so good for me because some people have been waiting for Final Fantasy fifteen for ten years. It's yes. like the game that took ten years to make another another game that took ten years to make. Um, and there's people I've been seeing some threads, and it's like, oh my goodness, I've been waiting so long. It's aching, it's, uh, you know. And as you know, I just kind of like just abandoned it. That's like, oh, I'll be rubbish. And, mm. and then only got excited about it about last week. And so it's really brilliant. It's so good. So I, once I watched a few trailers, I got hyper excited about it. Finished the pod last week, watched some more trailers. And I was just like, oh man, you know what? This game look, looks better and better and better. And um, yeah, hooray. So happy days. Good games are all around us, which is, which is great. Super, but we'll get into a bit more of that when we talk about kind of what we've been playing. Um, I've also had a very brief go of it, so we'll talk about that a bit more in a bit. But um, how's your week been? Not bad, actually. I haven't done much this week, um, game related. I was racking my brains trying to think what to talk about, like techie or whatever, and I couldn't come up with much. But one thing happened that was really weird. Um, I was playing a game on my Xbox, um, this and that one night. I think it was probably probably last Friday or something. Um, so hmm. I was playing away as you do, and then I thought, oh, I'll have a go on Forza now. Played on Forza. Um, and that that was cool, and then played some other stuff, and then the next day got up and went to play uh, Forza, and that was fine, and then I changed to another game, um, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go and take the Forza disc out, and I ejected the disc, and out popped, and not Forza, a different disc. What? Out popped, uh, I don't know, Gears of War 4. And I was like, and I, yeah, just just to let everybody know, my copy is a physical copy of Forza Three, yeah. Forza Horizon Three. I was like, what? And a proper was like, what? I was definitely playing this this morning, and I did not put the disc in because I was like, I was kind of what? What? I haven't changed the disc since I was playing it. I started to have, like, you know, think that was really strange. Yeah. Um, so you know, finished my go. Thought, oh, that's strange. Tried to look online for some clues. Didn't didn't really come up with much and i just thought oh, that's really odd um i'll just leave it you know and, and, and go back later so later when i fancied a bit of forza i'd taken the disc out and put it in its box okay and i fancied a bit of forza and i just thought let's let, all right let's just pop it on and it just loaded without the disc how bizarre and i was like that's strange and you know it has a little circle usually um mm. on the on the um, game picture to show that it requires a disc it's like a little disc icon isn't it a little white circle Yes. That was no longer there. And I was like, this is crazy. And I tried through some other games, and they required the disc. And How I, bizarre. Yeah, I just thought, this is really strange. So I was like, well, I've got... It sort of digitalized itself, because I think all the games install fully to the hard drive anyway, just because of a throughput thing. You know, it can't mm. access the optical drive. It's not fast enough, really, to access the data as quickly as the next-gen consoles want to get to it. Um, so for some reason or other... Whatever the uh, decryption key is, it, it forgot about checking for it. How bizarre. I wonder if there's just like a little bug at the moment with Forza. It's really You'll weird. get an update scene that was shot that down. <laughs> mm. Well, I did some more snooping about on the internet, and I did find some of the people that it happened to. Right. With not just Forza, with some other games, FIFA, um, and a few other games. Um, but nobody knew why. A lot of people just said, oh, it's because of a free trial. But there was no free trial when I was doing this. Uh, other people, whether it was FIFA, they were saying, oh, I didn't, you know, it's been a free weekend or something. Um, mm, but mm, these people mm. that were saying about it, they were kind of like, yeah, don't you think I know that? I'm not talking about that. This is weird. This is strange. This is a new dawn. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, well, I was kind of like, this is just bizarre. Um, so all week I've been able to do that. And I was quite excited about mentioning it on the podcast. And I just did, so I tried it again today. 
and it's gone back to normal. Oh wow! It's and really the circle, so, the circle it. appeared as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think the circle's there. But when I try and run it now without the disc, all of a sudden it asks for the disc. Whether it's because I've installed another game since, maybe that broke it. I don't know. But it's not as if I'm gonna never install a game to preserve, <laughs> you know, being able to beat Forza Horizon Three up without a disc. Um, I don't know, but something. I've, I don't know. Maybe um, some iterative update that goes around and just checks for stuff. I don't know what it was, but all of a sudden mm. it required the disc again. But honestly, wow. I'm not joking. All week I haven't needed to get off the couch to swap to Forza, which is pretty cool. But then, it, as mysteriously as the phenom- phenomenon arrived, it's gone away. What Microsoft giveth, off. they taketh away. <laughs> it just went away. See, now you know what it's like in my world to just sit there with the digital copies, you know, how easy it is just to go, oh, I fancy a bit of Forza now. You just <laughs> I've had a glimpse. Activate it. Yeah, you've given yeah. me a glimpse. The Lord Chesson bestowed <laughs> it upon... What, you were bored one evening and you said, what shall we do tonight, Nicola? I'm bored. I know. Let's give Darren a taste of the other side. <laughs> digital power to his Xbox. <laughs> and I enjoyed it, and the miracle was amazing. But then... I don't know, maybe you were feeling cruel this morning. I've had enough of this game, Nicola. Revoke his rights. <laughs> and away <laughs> revoke, it went. revoke. <laughs> so, yeah, that was uh, that was weird. And yeah. I thought it was going to be permanent. I was getting excited mm. that I was going to be able to get, buy games, install them and sell them straight away. <laughs> or return them. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to return You're- them, though, would I? <laughs> You'd be able to, what's that, your, your boomerang subscription will then just start kind of like every level one for a day, install it, return it, install it, return wow. it. imagine that, imagine that, yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that that was that was really cool. I'm, I'm puzzled. I would rather hmm. have had it carry on, um, just because, I don't know, it would have been more weird on the pod, but it's gone back. So if anybody does get this, I suppose this is the lesson. Um, I have didn't like run out and sell Forza or anything. But if this happened, there could be a little part of your mind that thought, oh, I might get rid of this. Um, and you might have just had the game five minutes. It might be a brand new game and you sell it for like near enough full price. But beware, because it's not a permanent thing. If it does happen, it like me, it could, you know, you don't, won't have any comeback if it, if, it revert, if it reverts back. So just be careful. Yeah. I wouldn't get rid of anything. Um yeah, it's just it's odd, but yeah, just just don't start selling or selling your stuff. It's like, well, oh, brilliant, Final Fantasy fifteen. I don't need the disc. Uh, I'll sell that then, and then the next day, <laughs> it's like I need the disc. Sorry, because um, I tested it a lot without the disc, and then all of a sudden it needed it back, and there was no rhyme or reason to it. It's uh, it's really strange. That is really bizarre. Really bizarre. Yeah. So, what about you? Um, well, not much really. I've had quite a quiet week. Saying that I've had a quiet week, I've been building wardrobes. I've been building war- IKEA wardrobes. The amount of times I said "damn you, IKEA" over the weekend oh. was uh, was hilarious. So my weekend was pretty much kind of taken up with kind of wardrobe building. Um, and it was really funny because like when we're designing with IKEA, you design the wardrobe like online, and then you kind of get it shipped to you, and then you have to build it, obviously. And then you know while we were doing that, we had so many kind of oh, this is fantastic. We'll do this. You know, we'll we'll get these slides drawers will get this and oh, I was cursing myself after a while because the amount of sliding mechanisms that I had to screw into the wardrobe it was <laughs> just like I was thankful for my electric or my little kind of uh, cordless screwdriver because <laughs> I was just like I was like yes this is the best gadget in the world oh, yeah. right now because it's no good Oh, it really was. It really was. So even as even if you know Nicola tried to pitch it as like kind of Lego, I was like, this isn't Lego. This is hell. <laughs> you know. So, Good so yeah. So <laughs> indeed. So kind of that's kind of where we get. I mean, we'll get to a bit more kind of what we've been playing. But I I had a um a really cool thing. I I kind of with um, Boomerang Rentals, which I kind of took your advice and signed up to them. Um, I got. Final Fantasy was delivered um, to me. I got a, a notification that because I had Final Fantasy, Last Guardian, and Dead Rising Four um, in my queue, so I got a notification on Monday that Final Fantasy Fifteen had chipped. So that meant that I actually got Final Fantasy from Boomerang on the day that it was released. Um, instead of an Amazon package turning up, a Boomerang package turned up. Unfortunately, I was away in Manchester overnight, and I didn't get back until late Wednesday night. But, um, but yeah, but it was just there, and I was really impressed at, uh, at that service that they managed to get a brand new game to me um, on the day of release. So I was, I was well impressed. That's really good, yeah. I'm surprised, because I don't think I've ordered anything 
in time for it to get it on release. Um, so that's mm. that's really cool, man. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so, I'm pretty surprised. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. So whoever they have, they must have a distributor. Or must be able to get a hold of games quite. <laughs> quite early um because they they packaged it it came in a little boomerang first time i've had one so it came in a little boomerang envelope and i got it there on the day of release so i was i was very happy i was very happy so yeah so that was really cool apart from that i have um i watched what did i watch i watched suicide squad again i watched the uh yeah, the the suicide squad's now out on kind of demand and stuff i watched that again still not sure about that movie i'm still <laughs> not 100 percent. they have some good bits i still love the harley quinn the joker bits i just want that movie you know i really want that movie but the um, the yeah, the that was kind of not too bad and then yesterday coming back from manchester what i do on the journey home i've got like a two and a half hour journey from manchester to houston so that's kind of normally just like some time where i just wind down after a busy day so i watched the new ron howard beatles documentary uh, which is called eight days a week um, which is all about kind of Beatles cracking America and their live, the live experiences, you know, them on the road kind of doing concerts and things like that. And it was absolutely fascinating. You know, I just sat there the entire time, but it was, it was great because I sat there. I had my kind of breakfast slash lunch slash dinner on the train. <laughs> and like, it, I didn't have time for any food throughout the day. So I had all of that at like four o'clock. I sat there, sandwich and a, a coffee and stuff. And I just, by the time it, the, the, um, the movie had finished the documentary, entry had finished i was at euston and it just flew by but it was i was so engrossed in the documentary it was incredible wow wow yeah i i who doesn't love the beatles but i'd love to see that i love I love the beatles <laughs> it's kind of a cliche exactly. isn't it yeah absolutely i mean it's absolutely fantastic and it finishes uh, i won't spoil it you know because it just is a nice moment but it finishes with one of my favorite beatles moments you know it just it really does kind of just finish with that and i was just like what a fantastic way to kind of finish this documentary and it was just absolutely fantastic uh, fascinating you know it had old footage of john lennon and george harrison and it was just it was absolutely superb it was fantastic i really enjoyed it awesome did it mention and if it did i'm sure it did or you may even know maybe everybody knows where the, the name eight days a week came from it didn't no no it wasn't kind of that literal oh, it right. was really a kind of about them being that they were just always the Beatles you know they were kind of like always on you know that they were they kind of they they were at one point you know you could see why they kind of gave up live shows because it was just crazy you know and they were constantly uh, uh, that band and that's kind of why I think they chose the eight days a week oh okay because the origin of it was um <clears throat> excuse me um one of them got a a, sh- a, sh- a chauffeur driven car i think it was paul mccartney got a chauffeur to go and see john and he sort of said, did a bit of small talk with the with the chauffeurs like how's it going and all that and he said oh yeah working hard uh working eight days a week just a flippant phrase and they really liked it and that sort of that started that off fantastic bit of trivia for awesome you, bit of Beatles trivia. i don't know if that's perfectly accurate but i'm pretty sure that that's the uh that's the sort of main bit. That's the uh, gist of the story, anyhow. You know, how that that title got its origin. Indeed, it sounds like something so flippant like that could actually kind of view you know, just a bit of a chat quite... and a good phrase from the guys. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I work eight days a week, me, and it's like, oh yeah, that's cool. You can imagine a cabbie driving around London at that time, going, you know that song. Oh, I gave him that. And they're all like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had Paul McCartney in the back of my cab, and I gave him that song. <laughs> I've been saying it for years, eight days a week. I get nothing for it. <laughs> Superb. So, I guess we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy, but what have you been playing this week, sir? Okay, um, I've been playing three games to mention. Um, let's get the first one out of the way, because I don't want you to shout at me too much. I was playing Gears of War 4, which uh, I got from Boomerang, which is pretty awesome. Um, so I got that installed, started playing it. Um, and yeah, it's Gears. It's definitely Gears, and it looked really good and everything, but... It just didn't click with me, man. It didn't click with me, so I uninstalled oh, wow. it and packed it off. <laughs> you, I think, did you do this in like the space of a night? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I sort of had my gears night. Started playing it at about seven ish, um, and then it got to about midnight, and I stopped on single player. Um, no, no, it might have been a bit before. It might have been about 10 or 11. No, I think it was a bit more, because I looked online to see if I could jump in and play a bit of Horde, and I think you were playing Spelunky. So All right, yeah, yeah. Was... So then I had to go on Horde. I was like, this yeah. is what I actually wanted to do, was play Horde. Mm. And I just found it... Um, it's funny, because by the end of Gears... I think I mentioned it before. By the end of Gears 3, I sort of... I was I was all right. I was sort of like, that was enough for me. 
and I, I wasn't too excited by the ending and stuff. And I was like, yeah, you know, I enjoyed Gears and put it away. And even though it's been a lot of time between the like Gears Three uh, and and Gears Four, it I thought because I, I did get quite excited about it when it was on its way. I was like, yes, you know, this is going to be good. It's going to be just like the old days playing hard. Um, but I just found it. It just didn't click with me. It didn't click with me. I did, couldn't get excited or enthusiastic about it. And I don't know why. I felt as soon as I started playing it, I was like, ah, oh, same old thing. That was what I felt. And I couldn't shake it, no matter what I wanted to. And I don't sort of understand because I used to enjoy that same old thing a lot. Um, so I can't put my finger on it. But it, it looked amazing. Um, but it didn't grip me. So I cut it loose. Um one thing that this is really weird is it made me the thing that it made me want to do more than anything. <laughs> this is my nostalgia coming out. All I wanted to do is play Gears Horde mode like we used to play. I think it was Gears Two because Gears Two is when Horde first came, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And I wanted to play Gears Two with you on the maps that I remember, and it just so I even started looking to buy it, um, but I stopped because I thought there's probably nobody playing it. Um, but don't do that. I've got a backwards compatible code that I can give you. But I couldn't play with you then, could I? Yeah, because I've got a backwards compatible code because I've got it online. I've got. I, I've had about. I, we gave some away on our Twitter feed, um, but I think I only kind of gave away Gears Judgment and Gears Three. I think I've still got a couple of versions of two left. Ah, well, that would be interesting. Because then, would you have a game of Horde with me, like the old days? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Reignite the spark. Did you not? You didn't play Horde in Judgment, did you? I didn't play Judgment. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because like Horde in Judgment, that, that's when it kind of brings in like fortifications and things like that, and that was quite exciting. I think they might have done a bit of that in three as well. I think they might have done a bit of that in three. You know, putting up the fences and stuff. Mm. Yeah, they, that happened a bit in three. Uh, and I got to be honest, I didn't, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as this more, sort of more simplistic Horde. Maybe my uh, poor northern brain can't handle it or something. But yes, I would yeah, love yeah. to play just to find out, really, for myself whether. It's rose-tinted glasses that I'm thinking about the old horde, or if I'm just, you know, if I'm just over it or something. Because yeah. it didn't feel like me. It started to worry that I'd gone off game. So like, how can I not like this? You know, I was like questioning myself. Got myself in a little stump and <laughs> turned it off, uninstalled it, and put it back in its box. Wow. Did you play any of the campaign? Mode? Yeah. Because the opening of the campaign is amazing. Yeah, I did. Which bit was amazing? The whole bit where it's taking you through kind of what's happened before as a kind of an introduction to the world, and then and then off you go into, and then you kind of see the new characters, and there's this whole bit where the, you you go into an an area and DBs are just kind of dropping from the sky, and it's just you know Nicola pl- is playing that at the moment, and she's playing it on the kind of hardest of hard levels, oh, wow. and she was playing and she was playing that level, and I was like, oh, can I jump in? And she said no, <laughs> so because because I would just die, and then you'd have to restart. Um, <laughs> You're so, ruining it. <laughs> I was, exactly. I was thinking, oh, I might go on easy and just play that that level again because it's just incredible. I just no, I, I, I felt very much. And if you break down any game, you can probably get here anyway. So this is not a great comment, but it felt more just for me. It just felt for me a little bit very much like uh, very flowcharty, very sort of game by numbers. It was like it was the same old formula, you know. I was like in this area, got to wait, kill the guys until it goes to. <laughs> and then carry on to the next set piece and i used to love it and for some reason it didn't it didn't bite and it, it's uh i'm as annoyed with it as it is strange because I, I don't know why i can't put my finger on it but it just didn't click with me but i think i said to you maybe it's just because i'm sick of shooting stuff because yeah maybe just maybe, come out of yeah. it's slightly different because they're first persons but i just finished call of duty and uh, titanfall one after another and then gears is the next game Maybe it was just, maybe I just needed something different than just you know ba 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 ta ta ta. The cover, you know, the cover aspect dynamic is completely different. So mm. I don't know, but yeah, it just for me personally, I thought it looked like I say, I think it looked amazing. It's totally gears, but I just I wasn't in the mood to play it. I wasn't in the mood to play it, which is weird. So I uh, got rid of it. Um, cool. Well, let me let me hook you up with a gears two code or a gears three. Which one do you want? Three or two? two? Okay, let me hook you up with a Gears Two backwards compatible code, and then we can then uh, we can put your theory to the test yeah, and see. <laughs> and you you can see what you think as well. Going back, 
yes. to see what you see what you prefer. But you'll be all used to the new one, so it'd be interesting anyway, wouldn't it? So that 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 was yeah, absolutely. That was Gears of War four. Then and this is like well good. I played Space Channel five part two. Yay! Ooh. Now I love Space Channel five from back in the day. It came out on the Dreamcast, the first game, um, which I bought. I got all excited about it because it was. Oh, I, I've liked rhythm action games forever. And so Space Channel 5 came out on Dreamcast, and I got that. And then the Part 2 came out. I think it might have come out on Dreamcast originally. Can't quite remember, but I remember playing that the most on Xbox 360, because a version came out right. on 360. And it's not backwards compatible on Xbox One, but I played it a little bit at my mum and dad's, because they've, they've got a 360. And um, mm-hmm. it's something that I played with Sam quite a lot, and he, he likes it. Um, and then I saw that it was available on Steam as um, some sort of Z- Sega vintage pack or something like that. You can buy. They've got Crazy Taxi and stuff as well, which I also love. Oh wow! Yeah, I love that. Yeah, game. I love that game too. It was like a big release on Dreamcast. It was, it was, hmm. When I got my Dreamcast, there was nothing for ages, and Crazy Taxi was coming out. I remember being so excited. Um, but yeah, so got Space Channel Five on Steam, Space Channel Five Part Two, and started messing with all the options and stuff. And it, it, the graphics sort of scale up when you improve the resolution. So I think we used to play it in sort of like probably 480 or something like that. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. it, I bumped it all the way up to 4K. And it looks amazing. It's just so shiny. Um, wow. I mean, the vid- unfortunately, the uh, FMV that we used to have in games when the video was better than the, the in-game graphics, um, that you can't scale video. You know, it, you right. can't like, sort of up-res it. So the video mm-hmm. looks shocking. And the, <laughs> but the game itself looks absolutely beautiful, and the core dynamics there it runs well. You know, I was a bit scared that when I've played ports of rhythm action games in the past, I felt that the rhythm's off or that you know the input doesn't quite work, which is key, you know, to hitting the rhythms. But um, chew, 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 and all that it just works straight away, and it's so good. And I thought that I'd nearly completed it where I'd got to it in, when I used to play it, and I got to that level. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to complete the game here. And um, it just carried on. And past that level, it just carried on and on and on and on. You know, rescued Space Michael, started dancing with him. And then I thought that was the end of the game. And it carried on. I was probably only halfway through it. And it just carried on to this amazing climactic finale of song that was just so, so blissfully enjoyable. It was fantastic, man. All doing that, all playing that Space Channel 5 theme sort of, Pretty much all the way through. Oh, mate, it's fantastic. I wish they'd do a remake. I wish they'd do a Space Channel 5 3. It's really good. Yeah. That sounds so cool. Like it's really interesting. Like you say that you can you can scale up the gameplay and not the FMV because that just kind of to me that just it's almost like the reverse of what we used to get yeah. back in the day, isn't it? Because we used to get an amazing FMV and then the graphics would be appalling. <laughs> there would be a right step down. Um, I always remember that with like Final Fantasy VII, um, where the opening scene was incredible, and then it kind of takes you into kind of you know, a little sprite that doesn't even have hands. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was always like oh, but that's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. I'm so so. Have, have you been uh, have you been playing it a lot or did you uh, have you been kind of like hooked on yeah, it? Yeah, I have. I've uh, I completed it. <laughs> I completed it, which I was really happy with. Um, but it's opened wow. up another like sort of a, a new game plus. New game yeah, plus, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's awesome. So I finished it off, and it's just so good. And I started looking for the soundtrack online because I just just had the tune in my head all the time. Um, mm. I mean, you should look it up. There's some uh, and there's, there's some YouTube videos of pl- a guy playing the whole thing in 4K. You can just watch it without having the stress of having to do it. And it's it's amazing. It's so cool. Um, but when I was looking it up, I noticed a bit of trivia that Ooh La La, she sort of reminds me. Uh, do you remember D Light? Do you remember the group D Light? Groove is in the yes. heart. Them guys. Um, well, yeah. the, the uh, lead singer, the lady, she's called Lady Miss Kia. She apparently was what Ooh La La was modelled on. Okay. Um, right. But they had some kind of problem. I think she was supposed to be Ooh La La, but Sega said no, but then copied her likeness, or she believed they copied her likeness, and even right. Ooh La La was one of her phrases, apparently. If you look, this, you can just Google this information. Um, but they had a falling out, and she sued Sega. Um, and so, when she lost the court case, so she got nothing, but, they, but Space Channel 5 still came out, and it looks very much like her, and you sort of acts like her and stuff. I think that the court case 
fell because you could basically say, well, she was like, this is my likeness, but you could say, you could probably argue quite well that if you just base Ulala's likeness on any sort of that type of woman in the 60s, it's not just you that's got the sort of, you know, the hold on that. Um, Mm, So mm. that was interesting. But then I also found out when I was reading the same threads that Ulala turned up in Samba de Amigo on the Wii because they brought out Samba de Amigo on the Wii and they had a special section, a Space Channel 5 level, um, with Ulala in it. And Ulala, guess what the tune is that Ulala dances to in Samba de Amigo on the Wii? I'd say Groove is in the Heart. Yeah. Bingo. Wow, man. Can you believe it? So they must have made up. Wow. wow. Or they just didn't care at that point because no one was <laughs> playing it on the Wii. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one will ever find out about this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. brilliant. So, wow. yeah, I, was, I really enjoyed that and I'm going to still play that. It's just it's just a pleasure to play and the music is so good. Mm. Um, so, if you fancy a bit of that and you want to play it in 4K, you can get it on Steam. It's a pittance. It's a few quid. You know, it's a few quid. Um, so, what else have I been playing? Oh, and was your was your PC easily um, running the 4K? Was it kind of easy to scale up to that? You know, you don't need a beefy PC to get it to 4K. My or? PC did it easy, yeah. So right. I don't know how low you could go, but it's not a demanding game. No. So I'd imagine I, I don't really know what graphics card could do it, but mine did it okay. My 980 Ti did it fine. Um, so yeah, yeah. But you can you know you could always have it in 1440. Or 1080, it's still better. Because one of, one of the TVs I've got, um, I <laughs> somewhat admitted to play it while I had his breakfast the other day. So I had to lug the PC out of one room and put it in the in the breakfast room, which is only a 1080p telly, so I had to change the resolution. It still looked amazing. still looked beautiful on that. Um, so I played it while he ate his Cocoa Pops. And he, and he just watched it <laughs> like we would have watched cartoons. <laughs> Wow, that's so cool. He's like, entertain me, father, whilst I eat my Cocoa yeah, Pops. Yeah, and I'm like, which level do you want? And he's like, you've got to do the one with pudding where she plays a guitar. I'm like, all right, then I'll do that level. It's like, right, come on, you got to eat your Cocoa Pops. So he's like, one more level. It's like, we've got to go to school. Wow. Imagine I was late because my dad was playing Space Channel 5. Yeah, yeah, at his behest, though. It's not like I was like, no. But, um, yeah, it's really cool. So Excellent stuff. The other game I was playing is the big one. Um I got excited about Final Fantasy XV, so I, I ordered it, um, and I got it on release day. I was a bit worried because I did because I left it so late. I thought I might get it late, but I didn't. I got it. Uh, I got it on the day of release, which was Tuesday. Awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Final Fantasy XV, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I'm loving it. Um, ten gig patch, ten gig day one patch on the Xbox One. Um, so that took a while from from putting mm-hmm. it in the drive. I think it must have been an hour and a half before I could play it. And that was with, I've got 70 meg download speed. So, the you know, I can get I get the patch quick, but it still took a long time. Yeah. To, with the downloading of the patch and the installing, it took a while. It took a while. Right. Um, but once it's on, um, I think I played it for about four and a half, five hours now. Right, right. Well, that's that's a nice chunk of yeah. time to maybe kind of get into yeah, it. Yeah, and I'm I'm really liking it. It's different. It's different than any Final Fantasy I've ever played. Um, the dyma- mm. the the combat combat dynamics. I'm still trying to get used to. It's it's odd because in, when you it's sort of it's permanently active, so it's it's real time um, fighting. Yeah. Usually Final Fantasy is turn based, um, though they they've made some changes over the time. But this is sort of like full on. Real time, though you can make a change in the options to a wait mode, which means if you're not if you stop running, if you just stand still, it freezes time and gives you time to sort of think about what you're going to do. Um, I thought that was cheating at first, but then I was in the combat and I just didn't know what the heck was going on, so I switched that on <laughs> and I argued to myself that that's the more traditionalist way, that's the true Final Fantasy way of playing it. Um, so I've turned I've turned that on at the moment while I, while I figure it out. I quite like it that way. And to be honest, most of the time I'm running around, so it doesn't often freeze anyway, unless you stop and stand still. Um, but the weird thing about it is, it's kind of it's really weird. If you just hold, so we're on the we're on the Xbox, so it'll probably be equivalent um, buttons on the uh, PS4. But in combat, mm-hmm. you hold blue, which is the X button, which is probably square on the PS4, to d- to defend. Yeah. And as long as you've got MP and you've got blue down, you'll just keep dodging. You sort of. You'll phase through, so you sort of a bit like the uh, twins from Matrix uh, Reloaded. You'll sort of phase through attacks. You'll just go transparent. Um, 
Mm-hmm. And all you have to do is hold blue, right? And you'll just you'll just avoid, 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 avoid until your your MP is taken up. And the opposite of that, to attack, you just hold red down, which I think is B or a circle on the PS4. And when you hold that down, you'll attack, 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 and you'll just keep attacking. And um, when you're attacking, if you're about to get hit, it'll pop up with a with a, like a guard button. And if you hit them blue at the right time, you can counter. So it's quite simple, right? But it's just really... I'm just not used to holding a button down to attack like that. Uh, or ho- yeah, And then switching yeah. to attack, to defend as well. So it's taken me by surprise, the combat. It's, it, it's quite hard to... For, I'm finding it quite hard to, to learn or to feel comfortable with. Also, you use the yellow button, Y, or um, triangle on the PS4, to teleport. You can throw your sword... Um, and you can sort of do a warp strike by targeting a monster and pressing um, that button, the yellow button, uh, and you'll sort of transport, like sort of blink through the monster. And the further away yes. from it you are, the more damage you do, which is really cool. Um, and also, then if you're getting hit badly, you can look around the scenery and there's sort of safe points. Um, it's called point mm. warp, and you can warp to say um, a branch that's hanging out of a mountain or something like that, or you'll stick your sword in a mountain and you'll hang. In safety and recharge your energy for a little while. Um, That's really cool, isn't it? So, like, could, did you play the little kind of uh, entry mode while you were waiting for it to install? You could have a, it was like free battle or something like that, and you could do that. And when all those orcs were running after you, you could just kind of go and hang from a uh, from a, a lamp post. Oh, I didn't see that because I, I, I kicked it off reinstalling and just went out. So I missed that. No, oh. the, moment, the moment you had the title yeah. screen, you could then just say um, free mode or free play mode or free battle mode, and then it just took you into that section that you had in that awful demo, um, you know, that big oh, area yeah. with the big with the stairs, which is kind of the opening cutscene. Um, and you kind of went into that big area there, and there was just these little orcs that were kind of running after you. You just kept like kind of getting used to the, uh, the control system and getting used to the combat. Um, but what I did was I was just hanging from lamp post and it just looks so cool you know just kind of just hanging there and then when you're up hanging from something you could then press square to then do a drop attack as well yeah can't that's you? right yeah it's it's it, as i say i'm finding it difficult to adjust to it because it's unlike any control method i've ever used but i'm getting more mm. used to it um and I, I like it a lot and i like it to the point where like yesterday i think it was because I, I i've not played that much of it and because I, I haven't been able to, because I've got things to do. <laughs> Real life is getting in the way. And I'm finding that what? I'm just thinking, I want to play it. I just want to play it. You know, I'm waking up in the morning, like, and I want to play Final Fantasy. Last night I went to bed, I was like, I want to play Final Fantasy right now, but I was too tired, I had to go to bed. Um, and sort of all day today, I wanted to play it. Um, I want to play it now. I just want... I just, I want it's, it's under my skin. <laughs> and it's strange, because... I sort of made, in my brief time with it so far, I was making a few comparisons to what it felt like a little bit, and the open world reminded me a bit like The Witcher 3. Um, right. Because it's quite, you know, it, it doesn't take long until it says, right, you can, do, you can do what you want. It seems that you can go off and do side quests as much as you want, and the side quests take the uh, mould of sort of monster hunting, really, which is cool. So if you like Monster Hunter, you probably like this as well. So I was just doing that, because I like to explore each section as I go. So I sort of dither around a mm. bit, you know. Um, and then at one point I was on a jetty and I was kind of like, uh, and I had to get to a somewhere in the distance in a, on a lake or it might have been on the sea, but there was a little island or something. Um, and I thought, I wonder if I can just jump off and swim there, but it didn't let me, it didn't let me swim. And that was when I went, oh, it sort of like brought me back to reality a bit. And I was like, uh, not quite as open as The Witcher then. Um, but then I started, I found myself defending it. I was like, well, I wouldn't jump off a pier in real life and swim. I would walk round. So Final Fantasy's <laughs> right. But obviously it's not as open. Um, but yeah, I think the graphics are good. On the Xbox One S, um, it's, it's HDR supported. So that's good. Um, beautiful bright stars at night and stuff. Uh, it looks very nice. I, I was a bit worried about having to get it on sort of, the infer- the most you know the the, the less powered pl- platform I thought because I sort of mm. I've always got Final Fantasies on Sony's consoles when I could um, except for twelve not twelve sorry thirteen which I got on three sixty I wonder why right. I didn't get it on PS three maybe it was just because most the games we ran better regardless of the power they ran better on three sixty in the old days um, mm-hmm. so this time 
I could have waited till Christmas, <laughs> but I, you know, flipping it, I got to wait till Christmas for my PS4. I've decided to wait for, till Christmas for my blooming Last Guardian. I can't put Final Fantasy on the Christmas list, so so I was like, I'm having this now, and I've just got to, yes. you know, I've just got to go with what I've got. But it runs surprisingly well. I don't couldn't give you the frames off the top of my head. I'd say it's probably running at thirty. Mm. It's got. A, I don't find this too bad, but I suppose you know, if you're very anal about these things, in things in the distance. Um, sort of have a, a little bit of a fuzziness to them, and then when they get closer, they sort of get rendered properly, you know, and look more of a hard look. Yeah. But I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Um, running around the world is fine. Going around in the car seems a bit odd. Um, you can't drive off the roads. You can't go off road. It's not. It's no Forza. <laughs> you sort of kept on the road. And apart <laughs> from the very first time I got in the car, when it gave me an opportunity to use manual control, the manual control has mm. been greyed out ever since. And all it do, all it wants to do is sort of let me drive the car to automatically take me to the next destination. But having said that, while well, while you're being driven, you can take over the controls anyway if you want. Um, you can right. So maybe there's like a free play mode that opens up a bit yeah, later. That, maybe there's yeah. something, or once you've cracked the yeah. world. I mean, over on the PlayStation Four, because it's quite weird that you're playing this on Xbox One and I'm playing on yeah, PS4. Tables have um, but so yeah, so you have to go into the menu. I don't know if it's the same on the. I guess it's the same on the Xbox One. You have to go in the menu to turn on HDR. Um, so you kind of turn that on, and then once you've turned that on, like you say, it all just becomes a lot brighter and a lot kind of um, crisper. And then also over on the PlayStation Pro, you also have resolution as well so you can then adjust and they can go together so you have either i think when you go into the resolution setting it's light or high um so i just kind of popped on hdr put the resolution up to high uh, and then kind of playing it in all that kind of uh, ps4 pro glory i wow. guess Wow, yeah and it seems so it's probably haven't spoke much about the game really but I sort of didn't like the look of these four guys. I thought it was going to be totally like, whoa, dude, whoa, all the time, sort of incomprehensible. Dude, bro, tribe. Um, but the voice acting and the script so far, I haven't had much story, but the interactions between the characters during the bit that I've played, it's pretty good. That You know, the, the group's winning me over, mm. and I'm feeling that the, that the bond between them is, is quite real. It's good, you know. I, I do. I like the guys. I like the, these guys that I didn't like, you know, just from looking at them. But after playing mm. it, I'm, uh, I've changed. You know, I'm, uh, I'm sucked in with it. I like them. The upgrade screen makes me chuckle. You know, when you go to the upgrades, you see all four of them standing there, like kind of guarding the galaxy almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes that makes me chuckle. I was I was going to take a screenshot of it and go like worst boy band ever, you know. But uh, that made me chuckle last night. When <laughs> or I was the usual it. suspect but, uh, sort of thing, isn't it as well? And yeah, I like it that yeah. one of the guys um, he takes he takes pictures all the time, and then when you rest right. somewhere. Because you ha- and that's though another weird thing. Like unlike other uh, Final Fantasies before, where you'd get experience after mm. the battle finishes, you, the, bat- the all the experience stores up, and you don't actually get awarded it till you rest somewhere. So it makes resting right. quite important. But when you do rest mm. somewhere, you get a whole stream of the of the snaps that this guy's taken during your adventure. Have you seen that? No, oh, right. I so haven't. You'll no, rest up somewhere, no. whether it's at a camp or whether it's at a hotel. Um, Camping is free, I believe it's free, um, but if you pay for a hotel, you get an experience boost. So like the first place you right. can go into a hotel, I think it's 300 gil to rest the night, but you get 1.5 mm-hmm. uh, experience boost, whereas if you just camp, you right. don't. But at the camp, you can train as well, you know, hone your combat skills. Um, but that's mm-hmm. but then, when you camp, then it awards you all the experience um, that you've saved up during that period between the last time you rested. So that's a bit. That's odd. It's a, it's different. That's really it's good, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, but it seems that sales are doing well. Um, just before podding, I just had a quick look around and, on the news, and saw many headlines. Lord in Final Fantasy's launch as a success, with it being, can you believe it, the series' fastest selling game. Yeah, it wow. sold more than five million copies on launch day. Oh wow, that's really good. So that's really good. It's flown off the shelves, hasn't it? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of hype. I mean, it was quite funny because when I was, like I say, I was in Manchester on Tuesday and Wednesday, so I was away from home, and and I'm kind of like walking around, and all I could see was Final Fantasy everywhere on the on the tubes, on the side of buses. I'm like, I get it. I'm on my way home. Leave yeah, me I'm alone. Trying, no, I'm, trying. Really, <laughs> I'm trying to get there. So I'm definitely, you know, they they have definitely gone big with the advertising campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's and it's working. That's really well. cool. But That's as really for good. the story, I couldn't tell you because. Just like you know, Final Fantasy games, it's not revealed much at the moment. The, the opening scene was quite brief. It was more concentrating on just getting you controlling your characters. So at the moment, I'm just roaming mm. about, enjoying the scenery, enjoying getting used to the combat, enjoying and getting used to the combat, um, and all the other mechanics of which there are a wealth to the game. Um, the I was going to say materia system, but the, the magic system. I think it's ascension. It's called. Um, you know, adding your, spending your ability points on different um, perks that you can spend in there. And the latest thing that I did was I went, Noctis, the main guy, his uh, passion is fishing. Because they've all got a passion, haven't they? Um, there's the guy who loves his camera, uh, so he takes the snaps. Um, there's the cooking guy, that's Ignis, with the glasses. And he likes to cook. I think he also drives as well. He'll show for you about. Um, yes. And yeah. the different things that he... he pick, when you pick up stuff, different food stuff from around the world, he... Mm. Um, gets inspired and thinks of different recipes, and the recipes give you boosts to your stats, which is pretty cool. Right, um, right. So he does that. Uh, the other guy, I've forgotten what his perk is at the moment, but Noctis loves to fish. So I had some Zelda esque fishing um, last night, oh, right. which is brilliant. At this, at this area with the sea, and I met a little cat. And it was like a little question, not really a spoiler. The cat wanted feeding, so he had to go and catch it a fish. So he went to the jetty, right. and he just magic a fishing rod into his hands. And then there was a little fishing mini game, which was really cool. And I caught a couple of fish. That's so and, cool. Uh, so that's something that I like stuff like that. So I'll be I'll be fishing mm. away. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, I don't really know anything about the story so far. All I can really report on is my feel of the game and. It's it's got me. It's gone to my skin straight away. I really like it. You know, it's 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 just made me. I think it's made me realise that maybe RPGs are just my favourite type of game. Hmm. Hmm. Because all of a sudden, you know, I was in a bit of a sulk with Gears of War, and it's like, but I did love Titanfall, and I did, and I liked Call of Duty, uh, Infinite Warfare, loads. Hmm. But this, all you know, those games, I were I wasn't sort of at night thinking, ah, oh, I want to play more. I want to play more, and I'm like that again already with this. Right, and I've not had that much time with it, so I'm really loving it. And there's got I've got so many hours to play of it. And the the thing, <laughs> thing is, ty- uh, what the Watch Dogs Two's turned up in the post today. Right, what from Boomerang? I, yeah, from Boomerang. <laughs> I haven't got time for that. I, I can't. I don't think I can. I don't know if I can do that. Right to play. T- Two open world games at once. No, no. I mean, the great thing is, is that they're kind of one's fantasy, one's real world ish. You know, so it's at least you're kind of setting them apart. But I guess if you're playing Watch Dogs, you're just going to be thinking, oh, I could be playing Final Fantasy. You know, so it really is kind of wrong time, isn't it, for a game like that to turn up? Yeah, I mean, I've installed it because I sort of I kind of felt I've got it. I should have a go of it, but I don't know whether I should. I don't know whether I should, can intersperse it into into Final Fantasy because I was thinking maybe I could just like play Final Fantasy till I've had enough mm. and then switch over and play some Watch Dogs till I've had enough I've played about 30 seconds of Watch Dogs at the moment and it feels a little bit like Assassin's Creed in its mechanics of the guy running about and that's all I know right. looks really nice um, and it's very sort of it's got a lot of nice retro style um, sort of 8-bit hacky graphics in it as well when it loaded but yeah so I don't know anything about it but I might just have to I don't know send it back or something because <laughs> I just want to concentrate on Final Fantasy. Um, but yeah, I, I really like it. How, how much have you played then? Just the intro, you're saying? Yeah, not long for me. I mean, I started playing the intro. I was really happy, actually, that I watched um, Kingsglaive, the the movie, because um, what uh, they did I haven't was seen. all that lore, you know, when you could have the tutorial, the lore, all that lore you kind of had, it all kind of built up in that movie. Because mm, I don't think the game goes that much into it. I think it doesn't almost, no. it, you know, it's handy to watch. Because I was thinking of watching it, and then I remembered your report on it, and I thought, oh, you didn't say it was that great. I was like, Do, no. should I watch it? 
it looks good, should, but yeah. you know, instantly you know who that old guy is. You know, and when he kind of, you know, when he comes down, the king who's kind of on the throne. You know, you know exactly that. And it was really interesting because like, having the high res text and textures and the HDR, it kind of like the game looked better than the movie. You know, that looked actually wow. kind of better than the because I had the PlayStation Store download for that. You know, and it looked it looked better than the movie. So it was just like it was really good just to go. Oh yeah, yeah, I know who that guy is. You know, and uh, so it did kind of build, filling a bit of backstory. So I then did the tutorial i've start, started pushing my car down the road i got to is it chris the uh the mechanic so i oh, have yeah, sid yeah, i think it sid is. yeah yeah i did that bit so i did the, that bit um and then i went kind of monster hunting um so which was which was really cool yeah i mean that was enough for me it just it, it left you off the leash to the go monster hunting and i just thought i think that was good i was just like i'm at I did one or two i was just like i'm happy with this yeah i yeah. like this yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's because I got home late from Manchester last night, and then I um, had some dinner, watched Flash um, because that's just awesome, and watched Flash. And then I was like, right, I'm going to play Final Fantasy. And then, like I said, I got that far because I, um, I Nicola kind of put the disc in as as your uh, your recommendation um, uh, does. Thank you very much, Nicola. Put the disc not just in. A pretty face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Before she picked me up, she uh, she kind of stuck the disc in, so it was already doing its thing. But I still had about sixteen or eighteen minutes for it to kind of install. So I and then. And I got quite late at that point, and I was tired. So I was like, "Right, yeah. I'm going to play this. I'm going to play this on Friday. This is going to be my Friday game." So I'm just really looking forward to having a bit of late session with Final Fantasy on Friday. Yeah, I've been doing that as well. I've been battling because I've had this and that to do, and I've been it's been getting way, and I've just been battling with tiredness versus desire to, <laughs> to stay up and play, <laughs> and uh, it's hard. Did you get? Um, a few different options and choices of resolution and things like that on the PS4 Pro? Well, that's what I was saying earlier. I got the resolution for light or high. So, oh, that, that that was that was it. Yes. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So it's just the two. I thought there was might have been more. No, it's there's there's kind of normal light. I think there's something like normal light or high, and then it's HDR off and on. Right, and nothing about frame rate. No, nothing about frame rate. It just says like resolution. Oh, okay, so I suppose your frame rate. Would, maybe locked at 30 if you do the high res and if you do the light you get higher frame rate mm, mm. but it looks, it looks yeah. very good I mean there was a bit where I was kind of running around like that free form bit where I was running around and I was just like I think I took a couple of screenshots uh, and posted them on the uh, Lost Spark community on the uh, Playstation 4 because I was just like this this game just looks incredible you know it looks it looks like the cutscenes that we were used to in old Final Fantasy games you know the in game graphics now running on the PS4 Pro look like that kind of you know, yeah, CGI. Yeah. Now we're, we're play, it looks better than that, don't we? It's like like you were saying before about the game looked better than Kingsglaive. It's like I remember the uh, Final Fantasy Spirits Within mm. being sort of a benchmark in amazing, amazing CGI, and you know now we're sort of almost playing that, which is which is awesome. Oh, you will love it um, when you do have a rest and you've got all these pictures that have been taken of your sort of your best moments. Mm. Um, you can share them to social media and things as well, straight out of the game. Right. Oh no! I'm cool. stop so I spamming. You'll people. enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, but then that'd be uh, really cool. That'd be really cool. No, I'm really enjoying it. Like I say, I just can't wait to get back into it and play and kind of hunt down some more monsters and keep going because I think the way that the um, the way that the kind of missions just you know you accept that mission and then it kind of it has a really cool graphic on screen to say that you're now kind of in that mission and then and I just really like that. I thought that was really yeah. cool. So I was like, yeah, this is doing a lot of stuff right. It's quite nice that when you fire it up, it just says you know Final Fantasy 15 for was it is it for kind of old and new players or yeah, something for like fans that. Fans and newcomers alike or something. Isn't That's it. it yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I really like that. That kind of made me feel because I, you know, I played seven never finished it but played some games but you know, final fantasy games along the way um for me that was kind of quite reassuring that i didn't need to be a final fantasy 15 or final fantasy fan i could just jump into this new game and, and not feel intimidated at all and i think it does a fantastic job of that yeah and every final fantasy i've played you know there's a learning curve because there's all different systems and dynamics you know you know you sort of know what you're getting but there, you do have to learn a little bit this one's probably the most different of any that i've ever played right Apart from when I like sort of went in the first time and was learning everything from scratch, you know, mm. some of the systems stick, and there is a bit of that. Uh, there's a few nods as well to the old games, like I won a fight, and one of the one of the guys, one of your friends, was uh, humming the battle music um, from Final Fantasy VII. So you finished the fight, and 
it doesn't do this in the game, but he went da 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 and he started just going ba 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 started <laughs> dancing. I was like, that's the tune wow. that you heard so many times when you're playing Final Fantasy VII. So it's it's full of little touches like that. When you're driving the car, there's a radio. Um, you can go through all the tunes, and you can buy from the shops new music. And I think I don't think it's all there at the start, but I think you can buy soundtracks from all the different games oh, from wow. the past. And sort of so you know hardcore fans are going to have that that they can just listen to in the car as they cruise around and I quite like being driven because you can just mess with the camera and just look around and stuff and listen to the music uh, I don't know if you can do f- fast travel I presume you'll be able to later on I haven't got any uh, chocobos yet or chocobos I'm never sure how to pronounce that bird's name um, when I first read it I said chocobo so I say that but I heard people say chocobo a lot I don't know. Yeah, so I, I always say Chocobo. Yet. I think I'm a Do Chocobo. You say Chocobo? But then I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm, probably I'm a Yoshi person. as well. I'm a Yoshi and a, a Chocobo. <laughs> oh, I'm a Yoshi and a Chocobo. Yeah. <laughs> Tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> oh, who cares? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I really like it. I'll, I'll report more as the weeks go on, like I did with The Witcher, probably. But, like, what are you playing this week? Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> like, all <laughs> the weeks. But Have you next- played Last Guardian? No, I'm too busy. <laughs> the next chapter. I guess you've got to wait, you've got to wait 24 days for uh, Last Guardian. I have. I have. And um, it's going to be brilliant. I'm going to be so excited on Christmas morning. I'll be, I'll be awake at half four, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Get Claire, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Sam, Sam, you're not excited. You're not excited. <laughs> He's not old enough, really, to spring up yet. Or right. Been. Um, so, yeah, what, what else have you been playing? Um, well, I've had a, um, a good week, actually, because I've been, I played uh, episode four of Batman. I think last week I was saying that I just downloaded it um, and I was ready to go. It was like a, a, a beefy a beefy download, a beefy update. So I've downloaded, played episode four, which I absolutely love, you know, and um, it's really cool how Telltale really have... Um, They've stuck to their guns. They've stuck to their promise, which is that we're, we're getting this out by the end of the year. So we've got one episode left to go, and it's it's fantastic. I'm really enjoying it. So this episode four introduced the Joker. Um, so we actually got a, a take on the Joker in this kind of sh- not strange universe, but almost kind of mixed up universe in, in some slight ways. So it's it's still building. There's a lot of tension. It's going to be a f- you know it's gearing up to be a fantastic final episode. Um, but I really enjoy the Joker character he was really good he was voiced by someone I had a quick look on IMDB but he was voiced by someone who was kind of pretty unknown um, but he did a really good job you know it was uh, he, he didn't even he, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of Mark Hamill there he wasn't trying to kind of be Mark Hamill he was just really putting his own stamp on the Joker and that was it was really interesting so the you know the story is just fantastic it, it's just it's really good it's just one of my favourite telltales for a long time so I'm I'm really excited by it and like I say that last episode i i cannot wait because what that means is we're going to get the last episode in december um but telltale kind of you know if- bleeding over into the news a little bit but Telltale have announced that um, the next chapter of Walking Dead is going to come out in December as well so we're going to have that point where we get two they're going to spoil us and we get two episodes of Telltale Games um, in December Wow, is that the new Walking Dead, like the, the next season sort of thing? It is. It's kind of the, instead of calling it season three, they're actually just calling it the next chapter. So it's like Walking Dead, the next chapter. And I think you know Clementine has grown up um, somewhat, and they're introducing new characters as well into the mix. Yeah, you can carry your save over apparently as well. Yes, yes. Now I it's quite interesting because I finished it on uh, Xbox 360. I finished one and two, and then I bought it again on Xbox One. I finished the first one, but I haven't finished the second one. So before that comes out, I'm going to sit down and play um, the second season. I'm halfway through the second season of Walking Dead. Like again, I'm pretty much doing the same thing that I did the first time. So I'm not really kind of changing too much from my save, um, but I want to get that done before I do that because now that they've confirmed that that you can take your save over, that's kind of spurred me to just kind of finish that and i love the second one anyway so it's all it's all good fun really yeah you got some work to do yeah no i haven't it's not too bad i think i'm about oh i must be about episode three so i think i've got four five and six so i've yeah, just got they're, they're not long are they 90 yeah. minutes each yeah about that you know kind of i can it's just you can just kind of sit there and just kind of go through them and they're just like like I say, they're a pleasure to play anyway. But Batman Episode Four, highly you know, highly recommend it. It is just absolutely fantastic. That Batman series so far is just it's fantastic. They did another thing again where you have an option. They've done it quite a few times in the game, but you have an option of you can you got something that you need to go and do, and you can either go and do it as Batman or as Bruce Wayne. 
and it is just really interesting you know and again kind of with a telltale game you get to the end and then it says okay you know 25 percent of people did the same as you or you know you get that and it's quite interesting to see how many people did that situation as bruce wayne or how many people like me did it as uh, batman so it was just it was really good i really like that mechanic and i hope um, I hope that we get more more Batman games because they really have kind of they've really got it you know they really understand that universe and even though they're mixing a few characters up they uh, they're doing really well with it so I'm I'm really impressed. Do you think the format would fit a PSVR game if in the same style? I don't know because a PSVR game you would have to turn a lot of it into first person. Um, but you know, I do like the idea of a kind of a Telltale esque game where you kind of have you know walking around because if you think about it in a Telltale game you're just looking around and you'll see the area that you can walk around sometimes in a very selected area and mm. then it has circles which you then kind of click on and your character walks over to that so it's almost like free walking so I think it would really fit VR I think it would actually fit VR. I mean, we have, I know you reported on it last week, it comes out next week as we're podding, so kind of uh, week commencing 5th of December, we're getting that um, Walking Dead um, pinball Pinball. table, yeah, so we're getting that, and that's coming to PlayStation VR as well as Oculus and HTC Vive as well. Yeah, it should be fun. So there's a, there's a lot of this stuff around. It, it, yeah, it's like I think the sedate nature, not of the storytelling, but the sedate nature of the gameplay is a little bit mm. more relaxed, isn't it? It might. Yeah. I think it could. I think it could fit, and it'd be. I'd be surprised if they weren't working on something. You know, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, uh, I mean, indeed, I mean, we'll get to it in the news, but we have the Game Awards are coming um, tonight as we're recording this, um, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a mo. Um, but they're coming, and normally, typically, we get a, um, a Telltale announcement, so whether we're going to see a bit of Guardians, whether we're going to see um, another project, who knows, but hopefully Telltale won't disappoint, and they'll show us show us something new, So, which will, which will be quite interesting. World premiere. World premiere. But then the last game, the um, the last game I've been playing um, this week is Sunday night. Um, m- um, James, um, friend of the show, Manny and Matt as well, with the four of us all jumped back into the division. So we went into the division because division got an update, um, which was survival mode. So we jumped into survival mode on Sunday night to uh, kind of have a go, kick the tires, see what it was like. And oh, oh, wow, that was a cool new mode. I am absolutely loving it. Wow. Now, so it's re- re-refreshed. Absolutely. It feels like, I mean, division feels very busy. You know, the division was incredibly busy when you're at the base and there's a lot of um, playable characters there was a lot of playable characters you know back to like when it came out um, level of, of of people just kind of milling around and waiting to go into survival etc because what survival mode is it's really interesting because you have um, you go down so in the main area where you spawn you kind of go down to your base you go down to the the terminal and then you have to wait for a game to start of survival mode because survival mode we were playing PVE, but even with um, PVE we had about twenty. There was probably about twenty six people all go into your experience at the same time. Wow! Now what the survival mode is is you're in a helicopter right at the start. You can you're in a helicopter. Great cutscene. You're in a very kind of snowy New York. Obviously, you're in a helicopter. A helicopter gets hit by a billboard and you crash. And as you're thrown from the helicopter, you kind of impale yourself on a nail. Um, So you're kind of bleeding out already and you're getting an infection. So all you've got is a hazmat suit to start off with. So you've got no protection from the snow. So what you then have to do when you're playing this game, the first thing you have to do is you have to fashion a, a, a filter, a mask. So you have to go and find parts. You have to find tools, fabric, etc. But while you're doing this when you've only got your default equipment on you're going cold and there's a cold meter in the top right hand corner so you're getting cold really quickly so you then have to go and find a fire to stand around and get warmed up and then you also got you got a thirsty meter so you'll be thirsty and then that if the if you're thirsty your infection um kind of ticks down even more because when you start the game it says you've got an hour and hour and change um an hour and change to live um and but you can slow like down Daisy. 
it does it? it's like a bit like daisy it's a bit like kind of um don't starve you know because you have to eat as well um so you find you know, you start with just you've got a hazmat suit on you've got a gun and then you start finding clothes and then you start finding guns or you start fashioning guns because you can go to these safe houses go to a crafting table and then build better weapons and build technology it's almost like you're starting the division from the start again because you have none of the cool stuff like james um because of his um broadband issue he kind of dropped out of the group of four um and so matt manny and i were all kind of like level 30 or something and james is like level eight but it didn't matter in the um survival because we're all stripped back to like level zero really and and it's just absolutely fantastic the only downside i think for a newbie player you know or, or for james was that when we got to the end we got some cash we got some like a weapons cash and when he opened it he couldn't use those weapons until he got to like level 30 <laughs> so so that was the kind of downside for yeah, him but but the gameplay that we had from going in to kind of doing it so we it so as i was saying before you got like 26 people kind of go into that area with you now what they're doing is they're not fighting against you because everybody wants to get the filter build their filter build their face mask get into the dark zone and then call the the chopter or call the helicopter chopter call the helicopter uh, call the chopper put the thing together uh, call the helicopter for an extraction and that's the end point of that game so what happens is you go into a, a building you see a building with a light on so you go into the building and go right there's got to be some stuff in here but when you go in it's already been looted by another player so you then have to try and find somewhere or try and take some guys out um, to get some loot or get some fabric or get some tools so you can then go and craft what you need to craft. So it's, and then, so, and every now and then, if someone gets killed, it just says, um, there are only 20 people left. There are only 19 people left. And then, and then it says, right, you know, someone's extracted. You can hear someone calling for the helicopter and they've been, for the chopter, and they've been, <laughs> they've been extracted. And so it's really cool. I mean, the first time we played, we were trying to figure out what we what we were doing we weren't quite sure um the nfl was like really interesting so manny and james were watching that uh well well um well matt and i were star jumping you know so we lost a bit of time you know we were having a, a septic attack or something you know while the guys were watching watching the football <laughs> and uh and so but the second time when we went in and it was just so much fun and it was the second time we went in we were like right we know what we need to do and we were on it you know we were really focused and and we just kind of went through and we got all the way through to the dark zone um we then had a bit of a miscommunication um and uh, and then we just got killed and then we just all went down and then so but it was really good you know and that was kind of like um that was the end of the session but it's very cool and we all agreed that we've got to go got to go back in because we really enjoyed it sounds really good um i think the highlight for me though of the story was the invention of the word chopper I'm going to use yes. that from now on. Um, but I was chatting to a guy in game uh, a few weeks ago about the update because he was, he, he was, I think he had a Division hoodie on or something. Um, I was like, oh, do you like the Division? He's like, yeah, yeah. I was going, oh, it's had a new update, with that, hasn't it? And he went, oh, yeah. He goes, yeah, but it's, he goes, I don't like it now because he goes, I was powerful and now I'm not. But I didn't really chat with him long enough to understand why. But basically, the mate, his mates in there were all laughing, saying, "Yeah, he thought he was like the king, and now, you now he's not." The, the, whatever the update's done, maybe it's that stripping it back or something. Um, but that sounds really good. I love the fact that it sounds it sounds completely different to me of what it used to be like. This this mode, I might be wrong, but no, 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 it is. It really it's is great. It's like. It's like it, it's like the first time you ever slept into the division where you just have a handgun, you know, and that's it. You know, it really is like back to that. But it's different. You know, like I say, you have to keep warm because when you start getting yeah. gear, when you start getting gear, you get your hat, your scarf, and you start kind of putting gear on. Then you, you, you're less dependent on those fires and, and keeping warm. Um, mm. So, you know, there was one point where there was four or five guys that were trying to take us out, and but we're freezing as well at the same time. So the screen is flashing your control rollers rumbling so you have to go and find a fire luckily one of them threw something and exploded a car so he just went over there and got warm you know so there was oh, at one point i think i was on fire you know and i was keeping everyone else warm you know and there's that sort of stuff <laughs> and it's just really cool and i just really enjoyed it you know i just absolutely love that game i think it's a fantastic game cool it sounds it sounds good um and a great update brilliant mm. and that's a free update as well isn't it it's no it's not 
It's oh, is it not? The, no, it's not. It's eleven ninety nine, um, or part of the season pass. So we have we have one more drop. So uh, all, we all bought the uh, season pass for division, um, but we have one more drop left to go um, for another kind of new mode, which is coming um, early next year. And if you uh, hadn't bought the season pass, would you be all in and arguing about spending uh, twelve pounds on, on on that, or do you think it's well worth it? Oh, I think it's well worth it. Excellent. I think the fun, the fun that we had, you know, you could play that game on your own and it would be incredibly scary. I like the fact that we played it as a group and that was really cool. Um, because the great thing about the four of us, we're all kind of, we're on mic, we're sharing our stuff. So if at one point I think I went to the crafting station and I needed, I needed something to, to craft and Manny had it. So he just dropped it, gave that to me. I could then craft a bit of technology that would then help us in the game. So it was just such a great experience to play as a group of four we were playing really well and and just playing that mode but i have been tempted to kind of uh i think before i went away to um manchester i was very tempted to kind of just jump in and see what it's like solo because i bet that's kind of really tense yeah you'll have to have a go because it's probably quite a different experience it'd be interesting mm. to hear what you thought about that and if it's good on both if it's enjoyable on both which i'm sure it is it's just even more value isn't it absolutely absolutely yeah no it's fantastic so that's the division like i say survival mode very cool um but let's start the new section and in this week's new section it's the game awards so time for some spark predictions um no man's sky gets an update and also we have the three psn games for december Darren, the first piece of news, sir, is with you. It is. Thank you very much. So we're going to talk about the Game Awards. Well, hey, I like the Game Awards. So do you. <laughs> hey. Oh, yes, yes. Um, and so when is it on? It's, well, it's it's tonight. It's time of recording, isn't it? Um, and what time is it on? It's 9 p.m. Pacific um, and 2 a.m. GMT. Right. Actually, no, sorry. 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 2 a.m. GMT. Uh, so, right. so I won't be watching it tonight. I'll pick it all up tomorrow. But what we have got is uh, a list of the nomina- nominees for, for the awards. Um, and remember a few weeks, I think it was a couple of pods back, I mentioned that you were going to be able to watch the show in VR. Um, yes. If you want to watch the show in VR, it doesn't look like you can. If, if it's From what I can glean, anyway, um, it looks like it's being sh- covered in VR by guys called nextvr.com. Um, and they're covering it for the next VR mobile app. So it looks like it'll only work on Samsung Gear VR and Google Daydream at the moment. Boo. Which is a bit of a shame. Because <laughs> I was quite excited about that. I wasn't going to stay up, but I was hoping that I'd be able to watch it you know, the next day in, in, in VR. And maybe there will be ways to. But for mm. all I could find was this next VR thing, which it looks like it isn't on Vive and it isn't on PSVR and it isn't on Oculus. Um, so just a bit of closure on that. So... So yeah, this is available on Twitch, so not VR, the obviously normal mode. It's available on Twitch, so you know, Twitch forward slash Game Awards. If you have an Xbox One, um, the Xbox app is going to be when the um, awards. I mean, you, I guess you guys have already kind of watched it already when this when the pod comes out. But it's also going to be available on the Xbox app as well. You know, their entertainment app, the XE or something like that. Oh so yeah, the live the live there. event player, or whatever. It's yes, yes, yeah, so it's also going to be on there as well. Yeah, so um, we've got a list, uh, thanks to uh, the website, of all the nominations. So, do you want to go, for, shall I read them all out and we'll have a guess? Okay, dokie, but we're going to do predictions, yeah? We'll do We'll do a few predictions. I'm going to be oh, rubbish sorry. at this. Um, but let's, do, you, do you want me to jot them down so next week we can kind of see who got a score? <laughs> yeah, should we do that? Okay, right. Come on, then. let's let's rattle through these. Cool. Okay. There's quite so a what we're going to do. So we've got the we've got the nominations, and we're going to say what we think will be the uh, award. What we think will be awarded. Yeah. Not not what we want to be um, a game of the year. Or what what we or, think. Or, we, yeah. <laughs> so what what we think they'll pick, or what we actually want. Okay. So yeah. So what what we think will win in the game awards. Yeah. So what so what we think that the judges will pick. Yeah. Rather than what we might want to win. Okay, okay. okay. Cool. Right, I've got a pen, I have a paper, I'm going to do this. Right, go for it. Okay. So what's the first one? Game of the Year. Game of the Year. I'm oh, not going to wow. do that for everyone, I promise. Oh, I quite <laughs> like that then. <laughs> uh, Game of the Year, what? so uh, we've got Doom, Inside, Overwatch, Uncharted 4, and Titanfall 2. Right. Game of the Year. Right, and we'll alternate it going first as well. Okay, okay. You go first. Uh, for me, I would say that Game of the Year is going to be um, not what I think is a Game of the Year, but I think what will be awarded will be Overwatch. 
Yeah. See, it's hard for me to split what I th- what I want <laughs> away. Um, See, I think Inside should be the game of the year, but um, I think Overwatch. Yeah, I think Overwatch could get it as well. I want Uncharted 4 to be game of the year. But, okay, so Overwatch is your prediction, yeah? Yeah, I think Overwatch will get it because it just seems to be, you know, the game that gets all the awards. <laughs> so, yeah, Overwatch. Um, next one. Best Studio Stroke Game Direction. Ooh. Choices. Blizzard. Dice. Id. Naughty Dog. Respawn. Oh, it's, uh, it's me to go first. You're now, first. Um, yep. So, I reckon Game Direction. Naughty Dog. Right, okie dokie. So Daz is going for Naughty Dog. Okie dokie. I will go for, I reckon, um, Blizzard. Okay. Right, next one. Best narrative. Firewatch. Uncharted 4. Inside. Mafia 3. Oxenfree. Oh, I haven't played Oxenfree, but I really want to play it. Um, I'm going to give, uh, I'm first, so I'm going to give Firewatch. Okay. Amazing game. Uncharted 4. You can't give Uncharted 4 every award, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I can't. That's what they'll pick. <laughs> right. Next one. Right. I just say Uncharted 4. I straight, love this. Right? This is awesome. Right. You ready? Um, the next one. Best art direction. Right. <laughs> Abzu. Firewatch. Inside. Overwatch. Uncharted 4. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> okay, you're first. There's some really good games there, isn't there, in Art Direction? Yeah. Is it me first now? Yeah, it is, yes. Oh, no. Um, I think Inside. Okay. I am going to go for Firewatch. <laughs> so I'm giving Firewatch everything, and you're giving Uncharted everything. I'm giving Firewatch. <laughs> See, that's got good Art Direction. So is Overwatch. Uh, mm, so that, o- that Ollie Moss, the Ollie Moss vistas um, in Firewatch are just absolutely incredible. You oh, know, yeah, yeah. I have that on uh, Xbox as well, and I want to play it because uh, I want to play it again. And I think Xbox has HDR, so I just want to kind of. I think it's been optimized for PlayStation Pro, but I'd love to just see that kind of in HDR. Prime candidate for that with its, all these oranges and beautiful yes. sun sunlight, um, some gorgeous greens and that. It was a really lovely, yeah, so. beautiful game. Next one, best music or well, sorry, best music stroke sound design, Ooh. and we have Battlefield One, Doom, Inside, Res Infinite, Thumper. Oh, I think we've got to go for Res. Yeah, I, I, I think they'll pick Res. Even though Inside's just... music went through a human skull. But yes. I, I think, oh yeah. But yeah, I, think yeah, yeah. I think they'll go for Res. You reported that, didn't you? That, they did. <laughs> yeah. that was just so cool. I don't know if it'll sway the judges. <laughs> no. We go, well, it did come through. You imagine you on a panel, well, you know, those other ones didn't go through a human skull, so they don't get my vote. They don't count. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're both on res on that one. Um, okay. Best performance. Alex Hernandez as Lincoln Clay in Mafia 3. Mm-hmm. Sissy Jones as Delilah Firewatch. Emily Rose as Elena. Uh, Uncharted 4 Nolan North as Nathan Drake in Uncharted 4 Rich Summer as Henry in Firewatch or Troy Baker as Sam Drake in Uncharted 4 uh, It's you first oh, It's a difficult one um, I'm going to need more paper Hold up. Who gave the best Emily Rose as Elena Emily Rose as Elena Yeah Okie dokie Okay, for me, I am going to do. I am going to do uh, Sissy Jones as Delilah. Okay, it's fun. I really am it? banking. I really am banking on the uh, on Firewatch here, aren't I? You are, man. <laughs> I'm, like me, we've uncharted, <laughs> but I have three to choose from. Me criticizing you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as you said that, it was Firewatch all the way. Um, next one, Games for Impact Award. So we've got 1979 Revolution, Block Hood, Orwell. Sea Hero Quest and That Dragon Cancer. I I haven't played any of those games. Um, unfortunately, I haven't played That Dragon Cancer. But That Dragon Cancer looks like it could be the most kind of impactful out of all of those. Yeah. So I am going for that. I am too because the story behind that, you know, if I was judging it, I think that I think it's got quite an impact. So yeah, yeah, I'm going with you there. Um, okay, okay. Next one, 
Best independent game, Firewatch, Hyper <laughs> Hyper White Drifter, Inside, Stardew Valley, or The Witness. Oh, hard. Is it? It's me, isn't it? It is. Oh, this is a difficult one. Right. I wasn't into The Witness, and I didn't, you didn't play it, did you? Um, no, I didn't want to play it. Yeah, I didn't want to. Um, so <sighs> I'm trying to. I, I'm trying to pick out a hyper light drifter and inside. Oh Jesus! I've just looked at the list. This is a long list. We might have to <laughs> hyper light drifter. Okay, dokie. Hyper light drifter. Oh cry. Okay, dokie. I'm going for inside. Inside for you. Yes. Right. Um, best mobile stroke handheld game: Clash Royale, Fire Emblem Fates. Monster Hunter Generations, Pokemon Go, or Severed? Uh, I'm going to go for Pokemon yeah, Go. Yeah, it's the only one I'd pick. It's got to be. Um, next one, best VR game. Batman Arkham, uh, Batman Arkham VR, Eve yep. Valkyrie, Job Simulator, <laughs> Res Infinite, Thumper. You're first. Oh, right. And remember, it's not what you want. I think Res Infinite. I'm going to go for Arkham VR because I just think that's just that's a one personal of the choice. Best games. No, no, I know it's a personal choice, but I just think the judges will realise that as well because it is just such an immersive, because of the amazing world. experience. Yeah. 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 So, what, what were you going for? Uh, Res Infinite. Because it's finally over after all this time realised its true form, and I think that that'll have a bit of sway. Uh, next one. Nice. Best action game. Uh, Battlefield 1, Doom, Gears of War 4, Overwatch, Titanfall 2. Is it me? I'm No, it's me, uh, and I am going to go for Doom or Gears, Doom or Gears, Doom or Gears. I'm going to go for Doom. I'm going to go for Titanfall 2. Um, best action adventure game, Dishonored 2, Hitman, Hyper Light Drifter, Ratchet and Clank, Uncharted 4. Oh, it's issue first. What do I think they'll pick? Uh, Dishonored 2. Mm, nice. No, no Uncharted 4. Oh. Dishonored 2, it's, it's too similar to Dishonored 1. Right. So Uncharted 4, I think. Cool. I am going for Hitman. Cool. I hope the listeners are enjoying us playing this game. We're enjoying ourselves. I'm enjoying yeah. it. This is awesome. Uh, best, we'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, we'll go through it next so, week. Um, best role playing game: Dark Souls Three, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, The Witcher Three, Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine, uh, World of Warcraft Legion, and Xenoblade Chronicles X. It's your go. I'm gonna go for Dark Souls Three. Yeah, so am I. I'd say yeah. Definitely. Um, next one, best fighting game: Killer Instinct Season Three, King of Fighters fourteen, Pokken Tournament, Street Fighter Five. It's a difficult one. What are you going to go for? Um, I can't see Street Fighter getting it because because it just hasn't had that pizzazz this on this release. So I played Pokken Tournament and enjoyed it. So I'm going to go for that. Be a bit quirky. Hey, Kadeki, I'm going to go for Killer Instinct Season Three. Okay. Excellent. Next one, best family game. Dragon Quest Builders, Lego Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Pokemon Go, Ratchet and Clank, Skylanders, Imaginators. Good selection. Ratchet and Clank. Gonna go for Ratchet. Uh yep. family game. Pokemon Go. I've never I've never written this fast in my life. <laughs> You're okay. Excellent. Best strategy game. Yeah. Um Civilization Six, Fire Emblem Fates, The Banner Saga Two, Total War Warhammer and XCOM Two. Is it me now? It is indeed. Uh, that's really hard. Really hard. Uh, XCOM 2. Nice. I'm going to go for Banner Saga 2. Okay. And we go to best sports stroke racing game. FIFA 17, Forza Horizon 3, MLB Ooh. The Show 16, NBA 2K17, Pro Evo Soccer 2017. It's not going to surprise anyone that I go for Forza Horizon 3. I'll second that motion. There's no other game in that category. No, there's no other choice for, <laughs> there's no other choice for us. Best multiplayer game, Battlefield 1, Gears of War 4, Overcooked, Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege, Titanfall 2. 
Oh man, what are you going to go for? Oh, is it me again? Um, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, what is the best? What is the best? Uh, 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 t- uh, Overwatch. Okay, okay. Overwatch. I'm going for Overcooked. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go for Overcooked, but it'd be nice if it, it'd be nice if that one. Um, and then we're going to we'll skip these fans' choices. I think. Okay, okay. I did. I would like to say I did vote for Danny Dyer in the trending game. I was going to. Oh, I was going to actually. I was going to do that one. I was just. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Let's go trending yeah. game because I think the stuff that Danny Dyer is doing at the moment with the you should have you seen any of those dads because you'd love those. They're like uh, he's doing big documentaries on uh, like deep dive documentaries about games. Um, he's got a Kickstarter at the moment and he's doing those. He's the first one he did was about Rocket League. All oh, right, and then uh, and I think the next one he's doing is about Doom. All oh, right, now. I haven't seen him so mm. yeah i'll have to have a look so trending gamer angry joe boogie 2988 danny o'dwyer uh jack septicai and lyric um so you're picking danny danny o'dwyer gets it from me and i'm gonna go boogie 2988 i'd really like it's it if he won i think he's he seems a really nice good guy on uh on youtube um and then, and then anticipated yeah yeah we don't want that one so yeah most anticipated game this is the final one god of war Horizon Zero Dawn, Mass Effect Andromeda, Red Dead Redemption 2, or Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? They'll probably give it to the Breath of the Wild because it gets a exclusive showing at that Game Awards. Not to say that it's, it's rigged. <laughs> <laughs> you think, yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. What are you putting down as your most anticipated? What, what, what they think what will be most anticipated for them? Red Dead Redemption Don't 2. Don't forget, this is, this is fan choice. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, it's fan choice, yeah. isn't it? Right, okay, sorry. I think I might stick with it. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2. We haven't seen anything of Red Dead Redemption 2. How can we How can we even be anticipated about that? We don't know. It's all in our heads. Uh, see, That's what happened with No Man's Sky, <laughs> people. I can't pick between them. Like, I'm really, really <laughs> excited about God of War and, and, and yeah. Horizon. I'm probably least excited about Mass Effect, but I'm still really excited about it. So least would be Mass Effect... And the rest I just want. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh. Right, I've done that. I've got them all written down. I will score them as I'm watching it. And, and then I will let everybody know what our scores are next week. Cool. And that's uh, that's done. So hopefully that was enjoyable. Um, so the next piece of news is with you, Anthony. That's fantastic. I can't wait to watch that. I'm even thinking about staying up. You know, Ticking him off. Awards. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about staying up. I'm thinking about getting up at two o'clock or kind of waking up at two just to watch it because my day's packed tomorrow and I don't think I'll have a chance to watch it until maybe all of the spoilers have been out. So it's kind of, I either wake up really early and just kind of watch all of the trailers or I just kind of wake up at 2 a.m. and, and watch How it. How long's it on for, do you think? Oh, it's probably about 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, about four o'clock, I can go back to sleep. Another three hours, I should be okay. Yeah, I could, uh, I, I could, I could do the pod page. I was going to say I could edit the pod, but I'm not doing that. That's your job. Yeah, but <laughs> you do a much better job than I the do. The thing is, it's like you say you go back to sleep, you might be all hyped and excited. Yes, because like I know after me and I watch him, I'm all excited usually. It's like yay, <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to get to sleep again. Well, I did that the other night. I was, uh, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning, and I was, I was like, I've got to go to sleep. So I thought I read, I'll read because reading that normally makes me fall back to sleep. So I will read. No, that didn't work. So I'd read a couple of comic books, reckon read some, a chapter of a book. And I was like, no, that didn't work. So I was like, right, I'll watch a movie. That normally kind of sends me to sleep. And I started watching a movie called High Rise, and I was just like wired after that that was it so i had no sleep whatsoever but i, I seem to be able to last without any sleep so <laughs> it's, uh, but anyway i digress next piece of news uh, is with me that's right and it is no man's sky is getting an update so no man's sky um sean murray has broken his silence um the the team there have uh, broken their silence and they have released the first major patch for um no man's sky so this is quite a big deal really because the guys at hello games have they've obviously had quite a tough time since the game came out um they've been cleared of any force advertising in the uk which was fantastic because i don't think they should have even been up against that but they've been cleared as for forth advertising and they have 
also released a patch um so this is the kind of a there's been patches obviously there was a day one patch when the game came out but we now have a first kind of update one it's called um and sean murray wrote a post or there was a post on um on the playstation blog um by hello games and they're just basically saying that update one adds um it's pretty much a foundation um update so it's kind of what um they've they kind of want to start it's kind of this is here you go you know here's here's a patch it's patch one it's going to kind of pave the way for other patches and other improvements throughout the game in the kind of covering months or even year so update one the great thing about this foundation patch is it adds base building um and they put a quite a cool little video um trailer of the foundation update um, which i'll link out to in the show notes so you can read the in-depth patch notes and again i'll stick those in the show notes as well but some of the the cool things that they've done is they've introduced a normal mode of the game which is they, they call it kind of it's like the original chilled out experience that you've got with the game so when it shipped there is a creative mode that allows players to explore the universe without limits to build the biggest base they can um, and then just kind of keep going with that kind of base building and there's also a survival mode that creates a much more challenging enduring experience so like I say I'll put a link to this pod uh, to this uh, blog post um, on the uh, pod page and you can kind of take a look but I think this is kind of a a, a nice kind of first step um, from Hello Games to try and wing back a bit of credibility um there's probably a lot of people that have kind of switched off already on kind of no man's sky but i think this is this is quite a good uh, patch and it's one that definitely kind of when i get a spare moment i definitely think i could jump back into no man's sky and listen to a podcast yeah absolutely i mean they've been a bit quiet um rightly or wrongly since release um not not saying anything um but obviously it's because they've been busy on this um well, I hope they all went went on holiday. Yeah. I think I hope I after their first patch, I hope they all kind of took some time off because they've been working bloody hard for like the last two years. Yeah. And I hope they all just left uh, their phones at home. They just, yeah, exactly. Shut off Twitter and then just went away on holiday for a couple of weeks and then kind of went back and went right. Okay, what are we going to do to fix this? Yeah, yeah. I do think that there could have been some communication in the uh, four months or whatever it's been since August when it was released. Um, mm, mm. But yeah, my only wish with this. It sounds great. I just wish, I just almost wished that they just hadn't released it when they did and waited till now. Yeah, that's that's all. That's that's all I've got on it. I just, just yeah. Why couldn't they just waited? Could... And maybe it was a Sony push, but just waited and brought it out with this, and there would have been none of this furor. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think because they already delayed it a couple of times, that already kind of caused that animosity where people were like, where is it? Where is it? So they pushed it out. And I, and I totally agree with you, Darren, there. That, you know, I think that maybe, you know, if they waited until, if they'd have waited until January for this, if they'd have just gone, it's coming when it's coming, you know, and it's coming in January, you know, this, this update brings like, as I said, base building, it builds, um, crops. You can start farming crops. You can hire people to do research for you. You know, there's yeah. all of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, they fixed and the inventory, really... I think, as well. Because the inventory yeah, is a big problem. They, they fixed that so things stack. They've got freighters now as well that you can ferry stuff around with. It's, it sounds much more like the game that um, we were led to believe it was going to be. Hmm, hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I know it, it's no Minecraft, but I know Minecraft kind of had a bit of a kind of a building, um, no pun intended, but building <laughs> when it first came out. You know, the... the the beta version of Minecraft, and Minecraft was in beta, wasn't it, for like about two years yeah, or something yeah, like time. that? You know, yeah. if this would have been, you know, free to play or something like that, saying like, we just look at this, what do you think? And then when they brought this patch out, you know, when they brought this this big thing out, they said, right, this is, you know, what you pay for. Um, that. I think people will dissect what happened with No Man's Sky for a long time, a long time yet. And I'm just, I'm just wondered how many people will download that patch or how many people have just gone, you know, I'm done with this. But for me, I'm definitely going to give it a go, going to jump in, have a look, see what it looks like on the PlayStation 4 Pro, see if it gets any, uh, see if it looks shinier. I mean, the screenshots that they've been showing of the bases that you can build look really interesting. You know, they look really, look really cool. And I like the structures. So I'm, I'm going to give it a go and I'll reply back maybe in a couple of weeks time yeah if anything it's a lesson in marketing i think yes and let's hope that lessons have been learned from that and maybe a lesson not just from the marketing but from from the fans from the gamers about expectation um not to put your money down till you're sure you know to wait have a bit of patience you know nobody has to buy a game um 
But yeah, I just hope that things like that have been learned from it. And it's just a real shame because, like you say, because of because of the negative implosion that was caused by it when it was released, can this make a difference? Can this change it? It'd be nice if it could, but like like you say, some people might just be like, "I'm out. I'm, I'm not even going to look." Um, so we'll just we'll just see what happens over time. But I think it's lost what could have been something quite magical. I think I think that I think that's gone because the reputation it will always have. I think the shining thing will be this sort of cataclysmic um, disappointment that happened, and that's mm. an awful legacy uh, to, for for it to have. And um, time will tell. Time will tell. Like you say, you know, Minecraft's been building away for for years and years now, and um, this is just the beginning of No Man's Sky. So who knows where it may end up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, after the blog post on the PlayStation blog, I was reading all of the comments, and you know, there are it, it's a it's a real mixed bag. It's a real fifty. Oh, that's 50 good. I was just going to say, is it a massive going, hate yeah, fest? No, no. I mean, it's not. I think there are hate fests around on the internet, but you know, a lot of them are. You know, this looks good. I'll check it out. A lot of people kind of you know just kind of bitter against it, but then there are some people that are like, yeah, this looks great, but you need to do this, this, and this, and that's nice constructive criticism. I mean, some of them are you know constructive, others are just downright rude. But you know, there are some there are some uh, you know interesting comments, but it's not all just kind of bile. Um, there are there is some actually kind of you know some some people are saying, me, yeah, I'm pleased with this update. Keep them coming. You know, I can't wait to jump back in so there's definitely some uh, some still some goodwill good. uh, for No Man's Sky good. and I think uh, what was Sean's tweet uh, Sean Murray's tweet it was something like if you'd have been us for the past you know few months you'd know how much this meant to us and that was his tweet as mm. it went live um, as the foundation um, update went live and you know it was just a few words but uh, you know it meant a lot you know I could you could yeah. it's, it's surprising isn't it just a few words and I felt for him um, so yeah I, I hope I hope that it rectifies some of the damage done and all the best for it um, growing in the future. Absolutely. It must be hard being Sean Murray because he's gone from a kind of, you know, an an indie superstar. (laughs) of the indie world. Yeah, exactly. He's gone from this indie darling without even uh, releasing the game. They did did Joe Danger before, which were great games, but they weren't earth-shattering. You know, he's gone from being this kind of indie messiah to to Peter Molyneux overnight, you know, and it must just be really hard, and he's really got to kind of build his credibility back up again. I don't know, because I sort of was talking to friends and Claire about it, and it's just like, you know, if you're in that position, and you're so exposed, and that, and you've got this backlash. Oh, I, I, I don't know how I deal with it. I think it's a terrible thing. I just have to turn everything off. I suppose. I, I think. I think for for Hello Games. I mean, I think they have to. I think they have to keep going. They have to keep slogging on with No Man's Sky because if you. Oh imagine, yeah, I just meant right, personally. Got, you take that. That. Yeah, yeah. But if you imagine, like the next piece of news we've got is the PlayStation Experience. So if you imagine if Shuhei Yoshida walked out and went, "Here's a trailer for the next game for Hello Games." It'll probably get booed off of the stage, wouldn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah, it, yeah, because everyone would be like, well, we haven't finished No Man's Sky yet. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No one's going to buy a Hello Games game until they fixed. I mean, they're probably not even going to make another game until they fixed it, but, you know, they have to keep slogging on. Yeah. They have to do update two, three, four, and yeah. five before they can even think about doing a new game. They may game. have to disband. The name Hello Games may have a stigma attached that no one will touch. Yeah. Um, Sean Murray is the, is the face of it all. He could. I don't know how it would work in the industry, but. People might shy away from him because they wouldn't want his name attached to something unless they can turn it around. So it could have really awful consequences. You know, it really could. I mean, like look at like Jonathan Blow. You know, Jonathan Blow kind of had a you know he had after indie game he had a bit of backlash, didn't he, as well with what he was saying about the industry. Mm. You know, so the next kind of Jonathan Blow game is always going to have that stigma attached to it. So yeah, absolutely. So well, you know, we'll we'll see what happens, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. It sounds like you know they've just taken out the, as many concerns as they could. It's like a tick list, isn't it, of the concerns about the game, and that's what they're giving. Um, but again, yeah, just to reiterate, I just wish, I just wish they'd put the brakes on it until now and just released it all together. But or, or just like you said, you know, if it was only been a beta and then they'd have added this and made it, made it um, full game. Yeah, it's just a shame. Yeah. So the next piece of news, sir, is with you. It is indeed, and as you alluded to, it's about the PlayStation Experience. It's only a quick one, really, but the PlayStation Experience is on 3rd of December, so uh, a few days away from time of recording. Um, 
It's on at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. GMT uh, on the 3rd of December. The reason I thought I'd mention it is that some rumours um, came about. One part of this rumour is one that got me. Um, so there's a guy, uh, industry insider Shinobi602, he was teasing some stuff that could be appearing at the PlayStation Experience on NeoGAF. First thing uh, is a new trailer for Horizon Zero Dawn uh, from Guerrilla Games. Um, so that's good. But, you know, that's not earth-shattering because we know it's coming. That's fine. I'm happy to see more of it. I'm sort of buying that game anyway. Uh, oh, that's day one yeah. for me, that purchase. That, that's even, that could even be day one and a day off. Yeah. <laughs> that, that game looks so good. Mm. So excited about that game. And, you know, we're going to have some PS4 proness for that. Oh, man, mm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Horizon Zero Dawn, obviously, that's going to be good. And I'd be very surprised if that wasn't shown. Um Yes. But this is the thing that he teased um, that got me excited. He has hinted that there's apparently, he hasn't hinted, he said, that apparently there's a new Wipeout game in development. No and way. And that was the thing. I was like, right, I'm adding this to the news. So there you go. That oh excites me. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> well, they're actually, because like, at the PlayStation Experience, this is something I would really like to go to. I was really kind of, uh, it's in Anaheim this year, um, so which is in California, and I'd really, I'd really like to go. I think it might be. It's a, it sounds like a real fun weekend if you're a, a PlayStation fan or a gaming fan. But there is, um, they have panels, and they have, um, and there are three unannounced panels um, that they reckon could potentially be about game or uh, games that are going to be announced as part of that keynote, which is going to be at uh, 10 a- did you say 10 a.m. on Sunday? Uh, 10 a.m. Yeah, Pacific. Yeah, 10 a.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. GMT. So it's well worth uh, it's well worth tuning into uh, because there's there's going to be I think the PlayStation Experience announcement last year was quite fun you know it was good uh, it was a, a well worth a watch so I think definitely this is a this is a Sunday afternoon watch if you're in the UK yeah definitely I'm looking forward to that it's on a reasonable time so I'll be able to watch it um, but yeah if if they were announcing you Wipeout man I'm just so so oh. though. They've dipped a bit. Available now. <laughs> wow, yeah, available for, available for free if you're watching this. We know we know you're watching. We've got an encryption thing going on. There's a handshake, and it'll be free to download. But, yeah, I hope that if they do do a new Wipeout, there was something about the last one, even though it was be- on PS3, right, Wipeout Fusion, and um, they sort of updated it as well to... Uh, there was, like, a second free expansion to it that was really awesome, made it better, actually. And that was in 60... That was, like... Was that 1080 60? It's 60 frames per second. It yeah, was. it's an amazing achievement on it PS3. Um, mm-hmm. But I found it didn't it didn't get me as much as I enjoyed 1 and uh, 2097. There's something right. about it I didn't quite like as much, so I hope that it gets more back to the roots feel with it. So that'd be really good. Um, but yeah, that just that just excites me. It, you know, the, the whole show. I'm just gonna. That's all I'm gonna be waiting for now. And if if they don't say it, unless they've got some kind of replacement mega news, I'm gonna be sad. <laughs> You're like they didn't announce that game I made up in my head. Damn it! <laughs> it was a rumor. <laughs> it was supposed to be true. <laughs> But like I say, there are some there there are some uh, keynotes, and they're going to be streaming those as well on Twitch, and also I think via the PlayStation as well. I know the kind of funny guys are going to be there doing um doing a bit of a thing as well on the Sunday, I believe that is. So it's uh it, it looks like it could be quite a quite an interesting event, and I do like this. I do like this uh, PlayStation experience. I'd like if uh, Xbox did one as well, that'd be yeah, really cool. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Um, so you know, we've got a lot of uh, games pizzazz going on with the Game Awards and then the uh, PS experience. It's uh, it's a busy week in gaming. Absolutely, we've got Thursday, a Friday. You know, because for those people that it's late at night, we get time to just kind of lord over those um, those trailers and all that newness that we're getting in the Game Awards, and then we get the PlayStation Experience. It's nice. Yeah, I, I wonder. I presume they're going to be streaming the uh, Game Awards and the play, PS Experience in four K. I, I shouldn't hope presume. So. I guess I shouldn't it's presume, but probably four K, four K YouTube. But then you won't be able to get it on your PlayStation Four or your Xbox <laughs> One S. <laughs> 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 What a joke. <laughs> Unless they get an update right now. Yeah, they want to get working on it. Yeah, it'd be amazing to say, yeah, this yeah. is the uh, footage in 4K. And by the way, we've updated all your apps. So if you're watching on uh, PlayStation or whatever, you can see it now. Ding, ding. That'd be really good, wouldn't it? Right then. Right in front of your face. Yeah. You have, uh, what's his name? Jeff Keighley goes from 1080p to 4K right in front of your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, and then in comes, in comes uh, Hideo Kojima as well at the same time in wow, 4K. Awesome, man. Living the dream. 
Living the dream. Right, the next piece of news is with me, and we're going to take a break from PlayStation uh, just for a moment, just to go over to Xbox. And we have Forza Horizon 3 has its first piece of DLC. So, this is really cool. So, this is the first expansion for uh, Forza Horizon 3, and it's called Blizzard Mountain. So, on the website, it says the Blizzard Mountain expansion for Forza 3 is coming on December the 13th and bring it with it the first for Forza. It's snow, it's ice, it's extreme elevation and blizzards to challenge players in their quest to become king of the mountains so what we've got here is we've got the snowy mountains of australia um <laughs> maybe it's new zealand maybe they popped over the the, the they popped over to the next piece of land mass and they've uh, they've gone to new zealand but i'm sure someone's probably shouting going there's snow in australia you idiot uh, but they've gone to uh, the snowy mountains and they are extreme sports so we've got some incredible looking uh, vehicles um, but the great thing about this it it is an expansion obviously there is it is going to cost uh, going to go to cost players but if you have um, either the ultimate edition or anything like that you do get a, a 10 pound discount um, for Forza free etc so you can buy the season pass or you can buy this on its own um, and you can get a discount on it as well so this is all coming um, this this first expansion will be coming on December the 13th it's worthwhile noting because everybody knows I'm playing this game for Chivos, it's worthwhile noting that Blizzard Mountain comes with a whole stack of achievements as well. So there is a whole load of achievements. Um, so ranging from quite a, quite a nice little booty of uh, of points that they've got there. So there's lots of kind of find. Uh, there's there's the normal kind of barn. There's championships. There's kind of find the you know, earn your first star in Blizzard Mountain. Uh, unlock the event, etc., etc. Unlock that festival. So it's all of the the same kind of achievements that we've seen in Forza 3 but uh, so the uh, Blizzard Mountain gets its own so I'm definitely going to be jumping in to this I own the Ultimate Edition so I don't know I guess I will receive a £10 discount yeah you will indeed I'm, I'm surprised I thought that if you had Ultimate Edition or one of these fancy editions it would be free I'm surprised yeah, I think with the Ultimate Edition, what you get is you get, we, we got early access, so we got like four day early access, we get double the points, so whenever you get a spin in Forza 3, we get double the That's points good. That's why you're so um, on that. Well, exactly. You get a nice little icon next to your Ooh. thing to say that you bought that uh, Ultimate Edition. And also, there's a whole load of car packs. So, if you're a bit of a Forza car buff, you know, you get a whole load of car packs, which are still coming out. So, there's still kind of lots of cars. But yeah, no, you don't get the, unfortunately, yeah. you don't get the DLC kind of, yeah. So, that, I mean, if you bought the expansion pass, which is like $34.99, you know, it almost takes that whole package, you know, with the Ultimate Edition plus the Season Pass, it almost takes it over to £100. It's a lot, isn't it? But worth it. <laughs> the amount of fun that I've had with Forza 3. I mean, I I want to buy this because, you know, the the beaches, the sunsets, the forests, the all of the things that we've been kind of going through at the moment with Forza 3 look incredible. So, you know, what's snow? What's the snowy mountains going to look like? They're going to look eye-blisteringly beautiful. Yeah, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will, but I'm not going to get it. I'm going to... Uh, I'm, I'm happy with what I've got. And uh, if it comes to it and I want a bit of a change, I'll play Burnout Paradise on Xbox Live Games with Gold. But... There you go. That's available. What is that? Fifteenth? Yeah. Is that available on the fifteenth of yeah. December? So right now, actually, as we're as we're recording, um, the first two games of this month are available. So that's Sleeping Dogs Ultimate Edition and uh, I want to say Outlast. Yeah, that was it. I'm sure that was it. Or was it Outlast? Yep. One they're of both those. available. It's like overcooked. <laughs> it's like overcooked and overwatched. Yeah, well, one of them's out. Um, yeah, so that's good. For, yeah, I might uh, might queue them up a, bit, a little bit later on. So yeah, they go. So thirteenth of December, um, just in time for the kind of Christmas break for a bit more of Forza Three. Um, the Blizzard Mountain Blizzard Mountain expansion is coming. Daz, give us a little bit more news, sir. Here you go. Do you want some news about Last Guardian? Always, always, always. As if we haven't. As if we. Haven't had enough. I mean, it's not been long to talk about Last Guardian, has it? Um, so what have we got? Well, <laughs> it turns out that in the uh, game's media kit, which has been sent out to outlets, um, there was a lovely letter um, from the developer, for Fumita Ueda, and the head of the, the development uh, team for Last Guardian. And he's written this note that's included in the media kit, and Eurogamer published it um, when, they, when they could, because there was an embargo on it. Um, and it's a little note to the player. It's quite nice. It looks sort of handwritten. Um, 
and it's got a nice little picture of uh, the boy and uh, Trico, and it's signed by by the man himself. So what does it say? He says. <clears throat> Dear adventurers, it's been a long time coming, but I take great pleasure and relief in knowing that The Last Guardian is in your hands. When we first began work on The Last Guardian, I intended it to take form and build on our experience working on Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, making it something akin to a Greatest Hits album. Unfortunately, as you know, we ran into a few twists and turns along the way, and the title took longer than anyone expected. Still, just as Ico and Shadow of the Colossus are truly unique games, so too is The Last Guardian, an experience unlike any other. As you play, take the time to stop and enjoy the scenery as you follow these unlikely companions on their journey, and you definitely won't want to miss the ending. The development team and I hope you have a wonderful time with The Last Guardian. Nothing would make us happier. From Fumito Ueda. I thought that was nice. That's nice. It's kind of a very similar to the one that uh, CD Projekt Red did, didn't it? With, uh, mm. with, uh, with The Witcher. Witcher 3. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that was, was really, really nice. It's really it's nice, a, isn't it? It's a really kind of touching uh, touching kind of note. Yeah, it's like The Witcher 3 just came out, as you'd expect, you know. To, to sort of match The Witcher 3's heartfelt note, you'd have to sort of have some gold <laughs> involved as well if we were waiting <laughs> 10 years. I still remember... I always harp on about this, but I still remember me and you talking about it when the, when it first dropped that trailer and how excited we were. And it's just beggars yes. belief that we are like seven years on or, or nine years on. I can't even remember now. And now we're doing this podcast, which is amazing, which we never would have thought we would be doing when we talked about it back then. Um, but the, it's about to come out. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, it really is. It really is. Like I say, what this time? This time next week, it will be. It will be out. It will be in our. Well, not in your hands because Father Christmas has got your one. Um, but it will be out. It will be out and playable and uh, out there in the wild. Yeah. Oi, Santa! Right. Yeah. Give him my game. I'm going to be um, going dark because I don't want to get spoiled. Uh, right. Are you, are you going to play it day one? I I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out kind of what my movements are next week. But uh, if I do, you'll have to turn off your ear- headphones. <laughs> oh, as I oh, as yeah. I tell as I tell our listeners kind of what uh, <laughs> what it's like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, but we never spoil anything. So you, you know, no. a, a rounded opinion of what it's like. I'd be ha- yes. quite happy to hear in your views on it. And you know, don't pull any punches if you think it's rubbish, even though it'll upset me. You just, <laughs> just tell me. It's okay. be... You'll just you'll just make me cry. But I think I think you know it depends on how it depends on how much I'm into Final Fantasy. Yeah. I think yeah. that's kind of like whether I'll play it or not. I I kind of feel that it's kind of that game that I kind of need to just drop everything for. Because it's such, it's been around, and as you say, you know, when we first saw that trailer, you and I were just hyped for it, you know, just kind of talking about it and just kind of really excited about that game. And I just think that it kind of is that. It's almost like that kind of just that end of a chapter. So I do think it's kind of one of those ones where you're like, yeah, do you know what? Just put put the pads, put whatever I'm playing, just put it down and and kind yeah. of get cracking. Yeah, it but it totally comes out, is, yeah, yeah, it to- it totally is, man. And it's like. You know, as I said to you, you know, I had a phase, didn't I, when I, I just I cooled off on the whole thing, and I was like, I'm sick of waiting. I just mm. forget it. I'm not even going to buy it. And then I sort of had this epiphany, and I was kind of thinking, you know, something. Forget having a silly protest. And exactly like you say, there, it's like there's a history with this. Because that doesn't really mean you should buy something because it's just delayed forever. But it, it's been such a sort of, I don't know, out of reach candle for so long. It's, I feel it's like part of our history um, mm. and part of my own because I'm such a gamer that it's the legend of The Last Guardian has been part of my gaming, um, I don't know, gaming world. Maybe not at the forefront of it, but just sitting there waiting just for so long. It's kind of become a rite of passage. And it was like, <laughs> to, to, to not get the game, this is ridiculous because, you, should, you know, if you don't want a game, you shouldn't get it. If it's rubbish, you shouldn't get it. But it's kind of become more than that to me. And it's kind of like, no matter what it's like, I'm going to get it and I'm going to play it and I'm going to complete it unless it's dreadful. Mm. Um, just to end, to end the cycle. <laughs> yes. yes. To bring the journey to its end. And it's going to be exciting and sort of, I think when when I've got it in front of me on Christmas morning, it'll be wrapped up, and I'm going to open it, and I'm going to sit with reverence. This probably sounds really too far, but I'm going to sit with reverence with it in my hand and think, crikey, what a journey. 
<laughs> so you've gone from a man to boycott it to the, the fact that you'll have a little bit of an effigy. You'll put candles around the box art. So <laughs> yeah, 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 I've gone from an effigy and now I've gone to a shrine. <laughs> yeah. I've been all the way round about seven times. <laughs> from from effigy, to, effigy to shrine, the Darren Whittam story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where will it be next week? I'll be like, I've had enough of it. <laughs> can't I've be bothered. my copy. <laughs> oh superb yeah. i can't know i can't uh, wait i mean it's gonna be, it's gonna be released on the tuesday we are we obviously we we're normally podding on the tuesday so i don't know if i it may even be one that i kind of play after so you might get away with not hearing about it next week it okay week i still have to go dark all over i'll probably still read the reviews as long as they're spoiler free um and the reviews there's an embargo on it until uh december the 5th oh right right um so <laughs> you know you haven't got that if people are on the fence about whether they want it on the on day one and they, they want to read the reviews. They haven't got long, because I think it comes out on the 6th, doesn't it? It does indeed, it does indeed. But, you so, know, you can't. You, you could just walk into a game, you yeah. could walk into a GameStop if you're in the US, you could just walk yeah. in. There's no great rush to... Download order, it so. online, you know, there's no kind yeah. of... Uh, there's no hard hardship now. It's not like Zelda when you can. There's only four copies in yeah. in W. H. Smiths. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, the, the embargo for reviews uh, is on 3pm on the 5th. So I'll be, right. I'll be, I'll, that day I'm going to be sort of very excited to see the reviews and I'll just be saying, please, everyone say it's good. Even though I'm getting <laughs> it anyway. But please, it'd be nice that it got a good, nice critical acclaim after all this time. But we've had some more news that I found later on. Um, just before pod again, when I had my little quick cursory glance through the news, and it seems that uh, someone's got hold of a copy of it already. You know, a bit like we reported um, on Final Fantasy being out in the wild last week. Oh, yeah. Well, a guy, um, a NeoGAF guy. Oh, no, a, ga- a Game FAQs guy. You'll have to forgive me because I'm sort of reading this live, uh, this information, because I didn't have time to, to read it. I just sort of saw what it was and thought I'd mention it at this point in the pod. So, Game, game FAQs user uh, Praise the Sun, nice name, has apparently managed to get a copy early of Last Guardian. He's provided proof that he's got it, and the proof is he's taken a picture of the game in its shrink wrap on his carpet. Looks pretty legitimate. Um, you know, it's thick. it can be faked, can't it? Oh, but he's also done a he's also done a screenshot of his PlayStation that so says now playing Last Guardian. Let's imagine that it's true. <clears throat> so he said um, some details about the game. Right. So I'm going to be reading these live. Here we go. So he said that the Last Guardian experience is quite linear, uh, in the vein of Ico. Um, I know I, I flip between Ico and Ico. I actually want to say Ico. Um, but it does feature some more open world segments that are like Shadow of the Colossus. Um, he said that the controls feel good, and so does the camera. Um, playing it on PS4 Pro doesn't seem to bring any huge improvement, um, and there's some issues with frame rate when you move the camera around. Uh, so yeah, he said. What else has he said? Camera's okay. Can get sticky, but not too bothersome. Um, you can invert the camera, but not the aim. Which is, uh, he says, is a bit strange. Um, graphically, he says it's decent, not uncharted, but good enough in his opinion. And some beautiful, gorgeous vistas and ruins. Um, the animations of the characters, the central characters, are amazing. Uh, puzzles aren't too hard for 1.5 hours in. Um, biggest technical issues that he found, and this could all be addressed with a patch, couldn't it? That maybe it really out. could. It could be like day one patch, uh, yeah, couldn't uh, it? Yeah, of course it will. Um, biggest technical issues: jittery frame rate sometimes. Um, nothing massive, but it is evident, uh, and he is on a pro, he says. Gives a very hybrid feel of Echo and Shadow of the Colossus with elements of both. Um, nice. So, I think I'll leave it there, because I don't read anymore. In case. Yeah, yeah don't, read, don't scroll, don't scroll. <laughs> so that, um, on the one person's opinion, um, sounds positive. So that, that that's good. I'm just digesting that as I read it, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Excellent stuff. I really hope because I think you were saying that there was a um, article on Eurogamer that there is kind of a pro patch coming, or it was supposed to have some extra frame rates or HDR nurses for the pro. Yeah, yeah, it has got some improvements that are going to be patched in, but I don't know if they're going to be day one now. From what I read, right. I think sure I saw an article in the last few days that somebody had uncovered something, um, a leaked document or something, or a picture. I don't know what it was, but it basically le- led them to to believe. That it wouldn't be there from day one, so maybe right. we have to wait a couple of days. I don't know. It's all speculation at the moment. Um, if this guy has got a copy, you know, the thing is, it why why 
why fabricate it? You know, it's not like yeah. it's a website is trying to promote. It's just game FAQs, isn't it? You know, where everybody just has a voice. Um, that sounds so legitimate. That, you know, they could be appearing and someone could have a, a, a stash ready for like kind of the weekend and beyond, you know, and they could yeah. just be selling it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you could pop down to you. I mean, I've, there's been plenty of times I've popped down to my local CEX and they've had games that have, uh, you know, due out on the Monday or Tuesday and they've had it before the weekend. So it could be legitimate. It probably is legitimate. Yeah, I think so too. I usually, you know, I wouldn't read it out if I didn't think it had some credence, uh, even though obviously I didn't really read it until now. But. What was I going to say? The thing, the positive takeaways for me out of that are, I sort of got to give the graphics a bit of a break because you know we were blown away umpteen years ago, and it's not going to be the, have the same effect now. But that that said, I mean, I I still enjoy Shadow of the Colossus now. Um, so if it's got elements of both that and Echo in there, for me. If it feels like a spiritual successor, like Shadow of the Colossus felt like it was sort of linked to Ico, um, albeit it was it was a different kind of gameplay. And if this feels like sort of it's taken the best of both of those and, and formed it into one, and the, I don't, the aesthetic already looks like that, and the, the controls weren't that great on Shadow of the Colossus or Ico. In fact, they were probably quite terrible, uh, really. Um, but you kind of... I don't know, I just... I didn't mind because the game sucked me in so it'll be it'll be a case of you know the game's content the playability over the style maybe maybe the style will make the game i don't know but i just i've got it's bad it's like a a no man's sky expectation i'm I'm sort of that's coming to the fore with me now i'm hoping so much that it's it's the world and the experience is, is is so nicely crafted that it's going to suck me in, and that I'm going to, and that all the players are going to get attached and en- engaged and attached to these central characters and enjoy this journey. I really hope that that it does that in the same way that they managed to with Yorda and um, with um, Agro in uh, in Shadow of the Colossus. I just that's what I want. That, that, that's the thing. It's the it's that emotional engagement coupled with. The enjoyment of playing those games, but in the next gen. But the, then it gets more complicated because it actually should have been last gen. So, anyway, you get what I'm saying. I hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> to sum up, I hope it's good. <laughs> so, but, you know, so so how are you going to play it on Christmas Day? I mean, are you not going to ignore your family Christmas Day? How are you going to play it? When when will you be more kind of a Boxing Day or? Well, my Christmas Day, which usually it will just be us three. Hmm. I imagine. Because we just like to have Christmas to ourselves, so we'll play with all Sam's presents and stuff. And then at some part of the day, I'll say, "Oh wow, I'd really like us to just look at this for a little bit. Let's put this game on and see what it's like." And I'll just put the, put the beginning on, and then as soon as Sam gets bored, it'll go off. And then when he goes to bed, I'll put it on again. Oh, awesome! I awesome. Think that's that's probably what I'll do. Um, yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Excellent stuff, excellent stuff. So that's kind of that's coming out on the sixth of December. Um, also out on the sixth of December will be um, the PlayStation Plus games for December. So they they all come out on the same day as the Last Guardian. And there's there's quite a bevy of games this this. I'm not sure about the quality, but there's a bevy of games uh, for PlayStation Plus for this December. We have um, we have a game called Stories: The Path of Destinies, and that is a humour, heroics, and action packed adventure is uh, for the perfect holiday entertainment play as the rogue Reynard the a pirate fox who doesn't like a pirate fox I mean this looks quite cool so this is stories the path of destiny I had looked at all of the trailers for all of these games um, the today and just kind of had a quick look bit of a read up this looks like it could be like a, a fun packed action adventure the style is quite nice it's a gorgeous looking um, kind of uh, I guess isometric almost view on this game and that's called Stories the Path of Destiny that's coming out on just the PlayStation 4 um, the next one that we have is Invisibles now this is a game that I've actually been kind of a couple of times have been 
just kind of teetering over going do I buy it I want to buy it it looks good this is a real stealth um, action game where I'm from, which looks really good it's got a really lovely style really lovely art style it's something that like I say it's been around for a while um, but Invisible Ink um, where you just kind of just kind of adapt and build your strategies and explore the world it looks very good it's very similar to Mike Biffle's volume um, but it's a, it's a very cool game so this is coming so that's again is PlayStation 4 and then coming to um, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and also PS Vita, so this is cross-play, cross-buy, um, is um, is the game called Hypervoid. And Hypervoid is a kind of fixed view shoot 'em up I would say, kind of in a very kind of... Uh, old school style so this this looks again you know they, they all kind of they look they have a great look and feel if you were showcasing all of these games in in one trailer they would really look uh, quite cool so have you heard about hypervoid does because it seems to be kind of very much kind of in your in your uh, wheelhouse yeah no i haven't actually but um after looking at it i'm excited to play it it's just exactly right it's right up my street this nice little shooty game um, mm. it looks really cool and invisible ink is supposed to be marvelous as well it's supposed to be yes it's not just you know, it's not a game. It's a game you should try. It's might be really good. You know, it's really up there as one of the fine games uh, that came out in 2015. I think, uh, I think Euro Gamer, when they did their sort of look back on the year, I think it was number seven in their uh, games of the year for 2015. Wow! So uh, it was. So like I say, it was. Good. I think it was like last Christmas or something. Whenever it came out, they were always like, "Oh, I want to buy this." There was there was two games. I can't remember what the other one was, but there was always like, "Shall I buy this? Shall I buy this?" You know, and I never did. But uh, I'm so glad now, yeah, because it's coming out as part of the PlayStation Plus. We also have Tiny Troopers Joint Ops as well. So that's giant Tiny Troopers Joint Ops is also coming out on PS4, PS3, and PS Vita. So I've already got two games for my Vita, which is great. And then Color Guardians as well. So we have Color Guardians. Um, I'm just kind of going to the store. This is a very kind of uh, a very kind of cute kind of uh, game where you're obviously kind of doing. You got to do puzzles with. It's all very kind of color based, as the title would uh, explain. It doesn't have a U, but we won't we'll, we'll, we'll let that go past the colors spelt wrong. But we'll 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 move on from that. Um, and you could just jump, switch lanes, swap colors, and there's about seventy stages of kind of these these puzzles that you need to kind of uh, navigate round. So this looks like it could be very cool. It's got lots of high scores. Leaderboard, leaderboards, etc. So there could be some, there could be some good gum, uh, gameplay in um, Color Guardians, and then the last one is um, is a game called V V V V V V V, um, which is a very kind of a very kind of interesting game because it almost looks like a bit like a uh, a Super Meat Boy um, kind of puzzle kind of single screen kind of jump around and solve the puzzles uh, game kind of lots of lots of. Uh, things that can kind of take you out and kill you so this is called vvv um and this is coming to uh just vita um so the playstation vita but it looks very interesting and like i say it does have a very kind of almost a spectrum look to it but the when i was watching the trailer it had very much kind of the gameplay and the slickness of movement looked uh looked a little bit like super meat boy imagine super meat boy on a spectrum without all of that blood and you pretty much got vvv vvv yeah <laughs> yeah it looks really good vvv i've been asked for it i've been after it for a while well not after it but I wanted to play it for a while and just never had the time um, mm. so I'm a bit gutted because I haven't got a Vita I was hoping this would be on PS4 but I might just have to buy it on Steam anyway but I think the premise with this is you just there's three controls left and right and one button that uh, f- switches gravity right and that and then you've got to navigate each room I don't know if it's a flick screen scroller you know remember flick screen scrollers wow I haven't used that term for a long time um, but yeah so it's one of those oh, games. That would that... explain why he was kind of jumping to the ceiling and then going down and kind of, yeah. like I say, very much like Super Meat Boy, kind of sticking to that uh, environment, and then going to the next one. So that would understand that why you're kind of, as you say, switching the gravities. Yeah, so very, uh, very easy to learn, but I imagine very, 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 very difficult to master. Maybe that's what the video. <laughs> yeah. <is. laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's very, 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 very difficult. So we have one, two, three, four, five PlayStation Four games 
four Vita games and three, no, two PS3 games. No PSVR games just yet, but maybe we'll get some news on that on the PlayStation experience. Yeah, yeah. My impressions of them, some of them I don't really know. Like Stories, I think looks a bit like Hyper, Hyper Light Drifter in a weird sort of way. Um, mm-hmm. Invisible Link has already said oh, that's maybe really good. I want to have a go at that. Hyper Void's right on my street if you like shooty shooties, which I do. Uh, Tiny Troopers, the screenshots reminded me of Cannon Fodder, uh, but I'm sure it's nothing like it. Uh, Colour Guardians. I think that was the only one that I haven't actually seen. Um, right. So I'm not not so sure about that. But that looks like fun, doesn't it? But, you know, it's a it's a bumper haul, isn't it, for December? It really is. It really is. They've kind of, you know, we were saying last week just how good um, the Xbox One game yeah, of gold was for December. But but this is this is also kind of this is also full of quality. It's not those kind of uh, classic games that we've seen, but these are all kind of very cool indie um great looking game so I'm, I'm interested to kind of jump in I'll bag them all and just kind of see and maybe have a quick play through in one day yeah yeah absolutely yeah, it's good. that's what I do just have them in the bank and then sometime you know you might have anything to play and you can just go oh yeah, yeah. I'll have to give that a go Absolutely. I mean, especially like like I say, with like one, two, three, four, five, six games on on PlayStation Four, you could just download them all one Sunday. You can just go, oh, I'll give that a go for an hour. I'll give that a go for, a, and see which one sticks. You know, see which one you actually kind of hooks you, and you can then just kind of play. And like I say, I think Invisibles and Stories, uh, maybe Hypervoid as well, might be kind of the games that I'm going to kind of uh, have some fun with. Yeah, I do love that. When I, what I love about this is when there's a game you've not really heard of, uh, you have a quick go, and you realise it's fantastic. There's nothing like that, and there's a gem hidden that you never knew about, and you get totally into it. I really love that. Absolutely. I mean, the classic that we had on the on this podcast was Broforce, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because Broforce, we scoffed at Broforce when we were reading <laughs> the PS that. Plus games for whatever. Like, Broforce, whatever. And then that became like one of my favourite games of this year. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, and, we, and you would never have known if it wasn't for uh, PS Plus. And then, you you know, you're aware about the developer, and so you mm-hmm. keep an eye out, and next game would have... It's like from the makers of Broforce, you're like, ah... Oh, now, actually, I'll have that. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, though, indeed. So, I'm hoping that maybe kind of something like uh, Invisibles or or uh, Color Guardians or Hypervoid or something like that just kind of grabs him as well. So, that's PS Plus for December. Um, so, some good games coming our way in a week's time. Yeah. So, now it's time to head over to the VR news desk for all the latest in VR. VR desk. Yes, hello, welcome to the VR desk, Anthony. How was your journey over here? Oh, it's lovely. I'm just getting into my jacket. Ah, settling down. Where's Vinny? Is he has he been kind of he's, he's in the cupboard now, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's been he's been sent off. He's not fit for purpose. <laughs> he's he's too busy sleeping on the job. He keeps toppling over. He's not interested. <laughs> he's not interested. He's just not interested. Just doesn't care about VR. He's stretching the elastic on his straps. Or my straps, I should say. So yeah, he's been banished, I'm afraid. He's sitting on the radiator underneath. He's gonna melt. <laughs> Imagine that polystyrene, sort of half Vinny, like some sort of surrealist painting. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, so yeah, yeah like... I need to find a home for him, really, because I bought this useless thing. The local tip, by the sound of no. it, is a good home for, for VR Vinny. So, what do you have for us on the VR news desk this week, sir? Lots of fun. I got four things for you. Um, first of all, let's talk about um, VR sales statistics. You like a few stats, don't you? I do indeed, always. So here we go. Now, a while ago, um, we talked about um, Superdata forecasting some VR sales. Uh, For instance, they forecast that PSVR would sell 2.6 million units worldwide by the end of the year. I don't know if you remember, but we we did do that. We did talk about that once. Um, They've had a rethink, though. Now that all the devices are out there, um, Superdata have done a new forecast, and they've changed it quite significantly. Um, the new forecast for 2016, they're saying that PSVR um, units should are going to sell at under 750,000. That's what they're saying. From 2.6 right. million, they've reduced it to say it'll only be 750k. Um, they're selling. They're saying that Google's Daydream uh, is going to sell 261,000, um, which they had earmarked at 450,000. And then with HTC Vive, Rift, and Gear at VR, they've all left them the same. Um, probably because they've been out for a while. You know, the sort of the, they've had the result with that, and that's at four fifty k for the Vive, three five five k for the Rift, 
and uh, 2.3 million for the Gear VR. So that's the big seller, but obviously it's the cheapest as well. Uh, maybe Daydream will give that a run for its money. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. So what did they say about it? Well, they said that the reason is it's it's a bit of a lack of marketing on Sony's side, but they don't say it's a bad thing. They say basically the best opportunity to get those sales <clears throat> was at launch. Um, but mm-hmm. because Sony kind of concentrated on the Slim and the Pro marketing rather than on the PSVR, they say that the, the percentage for the PSVR of marketing was less, much less than the Pro and the Slim. They are trying to sort of get the message out about those devices. And so people have been more influenced to get those consoles rather than the PSVR. Um, but they say that the message that they believe that people have seen because of that marketing is a sort of message like, get the Pro now, then get the PSVR later. Because it works really well on the Pro. So they, they sort of forecast that we won't see them break a million until well into the new year because of that. Because people are sort of more happy to probably upgrade to the Pro first. Um, or they might get the Slim. And they just think, yeah, I'll get the. It makes sense, really. I'll get, I'll, mm. you know, I'll get my house in order. I'll get the console that I want. Either I'll get my new PS4, or I'll get, I'll upgrade to the PS4 Pro, and then I'll get the PSVR. Um, mm. So it kind of made sense. Um, they said uh, that if so, they feel that if Sony pushed PSVR the way they were pushing the other hardware, they think the demand would certainly have fulfilled a supply of over two million. So they think, you know, if the marketing was different, they would have got there. Um, but how, however, given its quiet release, it's clear they're being cautious before fully investing in the tech. Um, without the killer app and the slow, steady release of AAA content, they will release less than 1 million devices until they have content uh, and they feel confident, sorry, until they have content they feel confident will bring in the praise that they want. They can afford to take it so slow since they have no competition at the moment. So their supply and sales will steadily rise in 2017 as opposed to riding the seasonal wave. So that's what they think. So they've, uh, you know, brought their figures down a bit, but they're not saying it's a flop. They're just saying it's a different strategy and that it'll be sort of a slow and steady sale once people have got, you know, got the console sorted out. Hmm. Hmm. So it's all speculation. I mean, do you think it's also got a part of that there was... Uh, it, I mean, you can't go into game right now and you can't buy one, you know, because there there, there aren't the units out there. I mean, one of the guys I follow on Twitter, um, the the um, the fantastic Dark Bunny Tease, you know, he... I think he's got a birthday coming up in December and he was he put on Twitter, he's like, oh, I'm looking for a, a PlayStation VR, you know, and it was, a good, it was a good week or so until he actually, I think he found one somewhere, you know, but it, it just seems like, you know, you can't get them. <laughs> Even if you if you were like right, I'm going to get my kids PlayStation VR for Christmas, you can't get it. You know, if you were like right, I want PlayStation VR to go with my PlayStation Pro right now, you would struggle to find a, a unit that wasn't on eBay for you know ridiculous prices. Yeah, I quite agree, and it's because of that that I was surprised when I read that story because I thought mm. they're flying off the shelves. I was thinking they'll easily hit whatever figure. You know, I thought we were going to have a story. When you know this story would be, crikey, can't believe it! You can't get hold of PlayStation for love and money. They're just flying off the shelves. They sold loads, but it seems that Sony have just been a little bit more conservative in their supply. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It's almost like they just kind of want to. It's almost like they're trying to kind of like just they're dipping their toe before they put the. You know, it's like shall yeah, we? You know, yeah. maybe they'll have maybe they'll have a bigger push. Maybe there's a game that we're maybe going to hear about over the weekend that is going to make them kind of do that bigger push yeah. for uh, PlayStation VR. I think it's been really positive. You know, they they. I I imagine they're going to feel confident with what they've seen so far. Like you say, they've dipped their toe in, and they or they they've, they've cast the line out there and they've had a big bite, and uh, yeah, it's now time for them to go to phase two maybe um and maybe a little bit of slight manufactured scarcity is good increases demand you know it's certainly with me if i can't get hold of something it makes me want it more um <laughs> so i i think that maybe it's a good strategy i mean you know we're not getting news stories of people queuing at the shop and like clamoring for them or anything but they like you say i've heard many stories as well of people that can't get hold of them and they want them um and i think that has a knock-on effect whether other people think what you can't get hold of this gadget what is it? And they then look at mm. it, and then they think, "Well, I want that." 
and it must be good if you can't get hold of it, sort of thing. I mean, mm. it, it might be that might be really bad thinking, but I'm a right sucker for that sort of thought process. Um, so yeah, slow and steady. You know what they say about that wins the race, don't they? Eh? So mm-hmm. we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's it, some uh, change. What, what would we say? Re- rethought numbers um, of those projections that were maybe a little bit more optimistic than. Uh, than it turned out, but you know it's still it's still selling PSVR and the, and the other other headsets are, are all selling well. Um, PSVR is the best one though, really, to get or to indicate massive numbers because they've got that install base of PlayStation 4s already. So if it wasn't for the PS4 Pro coming out, maybe it would have been a lot different. But then it would all depend on the supply anyway, wouldn't mm. it? It all depend on if Sony are only going to make X number of machines. That's all you're going to get. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I just, yeah, indeed. You know, it doesn't matter whether the PlayStation Four Pro's out or not. You, you can't get one now. So it may be your own personal choice that you, you've said, I'm not going to get that until next year. Until I've kind of built up my gaming fund again, and then I'm going to buy another purchase. But the fact is, even if you had that money right now, you would struggle to buy one. You can't get it on. I've just looked on Amazon. You can't get it on Amazon. You know, gamer saying out of stock, and so you would, you would have to wait anyway. So, so I'm yeah, they're go- yeah. Yeah, they're going to have to think about the marketing for it because there's going to be the switch to compete against it. Because you know you're not going to buy everything. Most people aren't going to buy everything, are they? Mm. They'll they'll pick a thing to buy. Um, you could argue that the switch audience wouldn't be a wouldn't be a VR audience, but I don't know. In these times of tech, it's you know it's, it's hard for for us in our bubble because we just sort of seem to want everything. But there'll be people that won't be interested in VR and only in sort of Nintendo and and, and vice versa. But we'll see what happens. Um, so the next item. Is uh, HTC have got a good? They've got a good philosophy here. They they want the VR companies to work together, which is something that we talked about at the start um, as we kicked off on the on the start of the VR journey, and we were waiting for headsets to appear. And we we talked about this because it was in the press a lot about the fact that there was many a quote um, about the main three working together: uh, Vive, Sony, and um, Oculus, all working together. Because there was a vested interest in getting the technology out there, and then you can split later when you know when the public's been snared in that wonder of VR. Um, now that hasn't really happened; it's kind of split fairly quickly. It seems to have fragmented really quickly. You know, Oculus want their own sort of walled garden. Um, PSVR is obviously exclusive from the nature of it, anyway. Um, Vive's quite open. But anyway, um, gamesindustry.biz um, chatted to Ricard Stiber, who's the president of Viveport, uh, which is the Vive store, um, where you get your Vive games from, and other games as well. They're not exclusive to uh, just Vive games. Um, and he's the senior vice president of VR at HTC, this guy. And he said that we are in the early days, and all of the VR players need to work together to make sure virtual reality happens. This is very similar to what we read a year ago. Um, rather than competing, we should make it easier for developers to create great content and monetize it. We need to help consumers navigate this field that might be initially confusing, but I do think people with mobile phones are going to upgrade to some sort of VR experience. I think it's natural if you have a games console that you'll upgrade to a more immersive experience. If you have a high-end PC, then you'll want to do this. Um, the important bit about that quote is that he's basically saying that he they should be working together rather than competing, and I, I agree, mm. but I don't know how much of that is actually going on anymore. It felt like it was kind of a big family, a unified attempt to bring VR to the masses and get accept, gain acceptance on a large scale, and I, there was like open terms like open source being banded around. I mean, um, Vive is kind of an open source thing, um, but there was, a, there was an idea that out there that they were going to work together and it, it hasn't really felt like that as the uh, different headsets have been released and it's nice to see or hear or read what the guys at uh, HTC are saying about that because I I think that's I think that's a good approach yeah. you know in the, in the early days if you can do it but I don't unfortunately I just think through the nature of business and competition it'd be very difficult for it to happen which is a shame 
it's probably like the the devs and the people behind the technology they wanted to happen because they will be able to move this medium on a little bit faster but then you get the kind of the bean counters and the money men that's when they're the ones that are like no we don't want this you know we want we want those exclusives we want arkham vr to be exclusive to playstation vr for at least six months and then that starts kind of separating doesn't it the moment they start making yeah. money that's when they're gonna be like <laughs> okay, okay we need to we need to keep this separate yeah, damn you, being counters. Damn who but, they always ruin it. <laughs> but but you're exactly right. You know, you're exactly right. I mean, what we wouldn't have these devices if it wasn't for businesses. And quite rightly, you know, the being counters. You know, they're trying to get their platform to succeed because yes. they don't want to waste a load of money on something that's a flop. So they're all obviously working for their, their, their own interests, um, which makes it very difficult, doesn't it? Mm. But it's a shame. It's nice to see from HTC sort of reiterating this plea, if you like, uh, that we that we heard before. I might have even been Richard Marks that said it. I can't I can't quite remember because it was so long ago. Um, but I sort of I was hoping, and, and this is a shame because him saying this makes me think that this isn't happening. But I thought behind the scenes maybe they were collaborating on the tech and going forward. But reading that makes me think that perhaps they're not. No. So, you know, but the, then the good thing about that is they'll all come up with different ideas and go up against each other and hopefully the consumer will win in the end. Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, I think in any war, in any kind of, you know, console war, VR war, whatever you want, you know, the consumer is the winner. You know, when you're looking at um, the subscription TV deals, which is like kind of Amazon film versus Netflix, you know, we're getting all of that good stuff. When you look at PlayStation and Xbox, you know, we're getting games with gold and PlayStation plus because they're trying to kind of one up each other and the only person that wins is us well they obviously win because you get a big bag of cash but we also win as gamers you know and especially we're again we're quite lucky to have both games both consoles so we don't have to kind of worry about when those free games come in what platform it is but you know it doesn't matter even if you do only have a playstation or an xbox you know you're still winning you know we're all because that you that company that you've invested in are trying the hardest to keep you from not buying that competitor's console and they're giving you all this good stuff so it's the same with vr you know we there is all of those exclusives that are happening right now on PlayStation VR, but they will eventually come out to PC. And I think, you know, Arkham, which is, is definitely kind of my, my VR game of the year, I think that is, um, that's going to be coming to, to you, Daz, you know, in, in March. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And you're, you're totally right there, because if we had a one-horse race, the ecosystem would be so different. You know, there would be no... The industry would have no real... Um, reason to change its mind on decisions that maybe weren't um, rejoiced at by by gamers and things like that. So, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you've only got one console, it's still being pushed by the competition. So, you know, you could argue that back at the guy, couldn't you? You could say, well, you know, you're all on your own. Maybe you're not working together, but you're going to push each other. But he's like, no, actually, but what I'm saying is we can all work together and then we'll never have to drop our prices. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe his veil of openness is like hiding a, a want of keeping the price up. I don't know. It totally turn that round on its head. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Right, so the next story is Ubisoft. Um, so HTC want to bring the company's closer together and ubisoft in this story are going to be bringing the vr gamers together in an amazing show of beautiful friendship between platforms so they're looking they're bringing out a few games that we've talked about before uh that eagles flight um star trek bridge crew werewolves within they're all coming on the big out on all of the big three so psvr oculus rift Rift and vive Mm -hmm. um but the, what we're talking about here is that they've said everyone will be able to play with everybody. Wow. Cross-platform. Wow. Pro- cross-platform gaming on these. So that's fantastic. So if we... I'm, I don't know so much about Eagle's Flight, but when Star Trek Bridge Crew appears, and I'm not sure of the mechanics of it yet, but if we can all take a different role in the bri- on the bridge, then me and you can be in the Enterprise both in VR, playing this game. And I'm excited about that. That's just so cool. That's just so cool. I, I, know, I just, like, I just I love... James has got VR as well. It'd be awesome. And we'll have a whole bridge of us <laughs> in VR. Yes. 
we if we could see each other's avatars, man, it'd be awesome. We'll we'll all be we'll all be uh, we'll all be uh, members of the bridge crew. I think that will be kind of that would just be so cool. That would just I love it because if you think about it, you know, there is cross platform is available, isn't it? So cross platform for PC to PS4 is available. I think Rocket League does that, doesn't it? You know, and for Xbox yeah. to 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 PC is, is is compatible. Obviously, there isn't. There's still those two are still kind of far apart. Um, but this this is fantastic because I think as you were saying, kind of with the in Eagles flight, you can get you can soar around Paris um, with fellow Eagles that are, and it doesn't matter what VR system you're on, everyone can just soar together. Yeah, and I really like that. Like some of the social stuff I've done on my Vive, you go into these these hubs and you you meet people who are on Oculus, um, and you can tell because of the way they move, um, and it's nice. Everyone's friends, mm, you know. Mm. It's good. It's not a war zone, um, and I just like that, and I love the idea. Um, especially because I'm feeling a bit isolated on my own in my Vive, but I'm really excited that m- myself and I can join you in multiplayer VR titles and that we can appreciate that together. And if they brought out some sort of social game that was cross-platform, even though we are, you know, 300 miles apart, we could, like, be in the same room almost, you know, virtually, <laughs> yeah. physically nearly. Yeah. And... I just think that would be quite amazing. And I don't think you've seen this yet in PSVR, but when you talk to an avatar and you're stood there talking to them in a VR experience, I mean, yeah, it kind of looks like Second Life, but there's something quite special about it. And I just would love to share that with you. It'd be awesome. And this is the start of that. So I think that's exciting. Doesn't one of the VR, doesn't one of the um, HCC Vive social kind of games also have lip kind of tracking has like kind of that when you're talking it does kind of it's moving the lips of the avatar as well so it does look like that person's talking to yeah. you as well yeah that's what i was sort of visualizing mm. when i was saying it actually the last one that i w- that i spent some time in which is called high fidelity which is an open source project um i think i was talking about it last week actually this is such a helpful community I walked in there and they were all like helping me um getting my settings, helping me get a nice avatar and stuff like that. But what shocks me, the the guy comes up to me, and he, he's an avatar, obviously. Um, but this game, because you've got the the, um, the touch controllers in, in your Vive, um, this is the first game that's actually drawn the arms in. Um, so instead of just the floating controllers, it actually just, just joined the dots, really. Mm, mm. Um, so, it, so it's like, I've got arms. And you look down, and you go, <laughs> oh, I've got legs. It's really weird. Um, but then he started talking to me. And there's some kind of magical wizardry going on there because as he spoke his his mouth worked you know his mouth moved yeah. and it really seemed to work, shape itself around the words and i said you, is that something special he said no you're doing it too it's just what it's built into the game wow wow and That's and the eyes so cool. the eyes followed you as well the eyes followed you as well he said he said right now he goes watch this and he goes i'll just stand still he goes move to the left and right of my face but look at my face and i was looking and his eyes were following me as i was walking it's adding an extra layer of reality to it or or life to the avatar, mm-hmm. and I started within. I tell you, it was no time at all. I sort of felt like that was a person. Yes, that that makeup of graphics, that makeup of number of, of ones and zeros, was real personality. And I suppose you get that in Second Life and stuff. I've never played Second Life and games like that, but I presume you kind of get that anyway. But this is it blew me away. Mm. It blew me away. And I told you about we we, we were sort of flying together. Uh, it's just amazing and I just love that and I know you'd love it mate mm. I know you'd love it and this is great because it takes away the boundary doesn't it you know of all these expensive headsets people might get one or the other for whatever reasons personal reasons to them but it's fantastic to think that we can all join each other in multiplayer yes. and enjoy VR so I think it's a uh, it's a good move from from Ubisoft, and I hope that uh, I hope that's something that a trend that that spreads going forward. Yeah, absolutely. I hope that's something that you know all of those those uh, suppliers of those headsets push. You know, it's like look, Ubisoft have set the what they've set the way. You know, follow this for your you know all games need to be if you've got multiplayer aspect. You know, you need to be cross platform. I think as well, actually thinking about it, it's probably a shrewd decision from a business point of view because if there aren't massive numbers out there of the headsets then the number of players obviously is going to be less so to include more is going to give a more fleshed out experience to the game isn't it absolutely so it, so you know it just makes sense doesn't it because you don't want to see a, a lobby with no one in it 
no no and also you know it's a case of where you you're playing a game so you you fire up star trek bridge crew and you're like oh you really should play this it's fantastic and i'm like well i can't i've got places i've only got playstation vr and then you say but yeah but you can you can play it we can still play together and that's like i'm like okay you know and i'm off and i'm gonna buy that title because we can do that together and we will have that experience so you're, i'm gonna buy it just because of that you know not because of the game and i i'm a big star trek fan but not just because of the game but because of that aspect you know because that we can play cross-platform so they've got a sale from us just because of that feature yeah absolutely and we'll talk about it on the pod as well and now i you know i hadn't thought about this but this is actually going to happen because i'm gonna i've already played like artemis and other games like uh, bridge simulating games they're awesome man and i can't wait to say like Chesson, you have the bridge oh. and you're going to be in charge and you're going to say i don't know klingons on the starboard bow daz What's the situation with the guns and I'll be have my little desk and stuff? It'll be so good, man. No, that'll be amazing. That'll just be so much and fun. And we'll actually be on, on the Enterprise as well. It won't be the... I think it's going to be even better than the, the sort of party game you play at home. Because we'll look around and we're going to be on the Enterprise. Hmm. Oh, I'm quite excited about that. When's it out? Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when can we get this? I don't know when it's out. I'm just trying to Google it. So while you were talking, I'm like, Tarja Bridge Crew... Oh, good. I, what, shall I not start looking then? Because just as I spoke, I was getting more and more excited about that. When is it out? I'm just going when to go to Ubisoft. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, come on, Ubisoft. Come on, Witcher. Uh, 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 fall 2016. That's now. That's now. We are in the fall. We're in the winter now, aren't we? Surely. So, so oh, hold on a minute. No, March 14th, 2017. Ah. Uh, but the official website uh, on Ubisoft.com says fall. They haven't updated it. No oh, right. Well, you think that Google would know wouldn't know better than Ubisoft, but it's uh, it seems that if you type in Star Trek Bridge Crew release date into Google, it pops up straight away in big letters, March fourteenth, twenty seventeen. Right. So, if it's not fall, it'll be then. Awesome. Let's, let's put it that way. Excellent stuff. Um, oh, so I've got, I've still got time to uh, get my uh, Star Trek T-shirt to get a Star Trek uniform. <laughs> I'm going. Yeah, whole, see, was, I'm going whole hog. <laughs> I was going to do this and have a little party with a few people with the Artemis bridge simulator, yeah. which you can get on iOS and and on PC. <clears throat> and you can have, I think, like up to five of you. And I'd love to get the the, the, the tops and everything in the outfits and arrange the chairs mm. in the lounge <laughs> and have the, you know the captain in front of the big screen. Yeah. And I've seen YouTube videos on it, and it's hilarious. It's amazing. I'd love to do it. And um, I'm sure if we lived a bit closer, we'd be, we'd have done that by now. But we can do it virtually. Awesome. We can do it virtually. Excellent stuff. And finally, um, we have, it's probably maybe just a quick one, this. This is about uh, HoloLens, Microsoft's mixed reality uh, solution. Um, it's actually starting to ship to the UK. Oh, you weren't right. able to get it, but it's going to start shipping um, on uh, yesterday. Yesterday, 30th of November, mm-hmm. it started shipping. Um so what can you get? Well, you can get the dev kit, Microsoft HoloLens Dev Development Edition at £2,719. Remember, this ha- This has the computer built in. Yeah. So you don't... Have, well, you need a PC probably to develop for it, but um, it's got the computer built into the HMD on this one. Um, or... Oh, that's including VAT, by the way. Or you can go for the Microsoft HoloLens Commercial Suite at, <laughs> wait for it, £4,529. Wow. Including VAT, including tax. Um, so, yeah, they started shipping out to the UK and uh, probably other places in Europe too. So what do you get? Well, in both of these um, pieces of hardware, it looks like the HMDs are pretty much the same. It's the software that you get um, with them that changes. So in the box, you get, obviously, the HMD. You get a clicker, a carry case, a charger, and a cable, a microfiber cloth, um nose pads and an overhead strap uh, and then it's the software and that's where the different costs come in so the commercial suite comes with some extra additions you get kiosk mode so that's where you can like lock things down you know for demo purposes make people so they can't you know get to the back end mm-hmm. um, you get mobile device management for hololens so a bit of mdm um, so probably so you know it can work with your Active Directory network and stuff like that, and be and have settings managed. So this is as if you're going to be using it in an enterprise organisation, mm. um, and and they have said that it's more of a commercial thing at this stage. It's not really a consumer toy; it's more of a consumer device at the moment. And then they're going to push it maybe later to sort of you know 
toy people like me and you. But this is like very much being targeted at sort of enterprise. Um, so you also get a thing called identity. And that's an, oh, here we go, Azure uh, Cloud Active Directory integration and next-gen credentials with a pin unlock. You get Windows Update for business, um, so controlled operating system updates to devices and support for long-term uh, servicing. Data security, so you get encryption on it. Uh, secure boot enabled on HoloLens to provide the same amount of security as any other Windows device. Work access. Anyone in your organization can remotely connect to the corporate network through a VPN on HoloLens. You 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 take this in as a business case, Anthony. Oh, I'm I'm thinking about that just now. <laughs> right. as, I, as I read this, I'm thinking <laughs> if I was still the old IT manager at my last place, I'd be putting this forward as a, I would think of some justification. This would be the next project. See, um, I've got to finalise budgets tomorrow, so maybe I'll just put a couple of these in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can if you got you probably have a spare five grand, it's easy. Um <laughs> HoloLens can also access Wi-Fi networks that require credentials, so that's nice to know. And then also you get Windows Store for business, so you can securely distribute your enterprise software to a selected group of enterprise users. So that's awesome if you could ring ring fence a group in AD Mm -hmm. and only them have got access to the store, because that's that's just really cool, you know. You've got your worker using HoloLens, they like require this, but they don't have to go to the big store, but they go to your work store and get the app they need themselves. Self-service? Awesome. Um, no, no plans yet, as I mentioned, of a consumer version. Um, but yeah, don't can't see many people spending four grand on one yet. Um, but you know, it's got released now. It's shipping. People are going to start tinkering with it. We're going to see what the developers can do with it, uh, which will be nice. You know, to see it in the real world instead of these staged presentations. And it'll be interesting to see what businesses do. I mean, we've already seen some of these videos where engineers use it. NASA are going to be using it quite a lot, but they're interested in all the VR technologies. And uh, maybe we'll hear your verdict when you get it at your when you get it at your place. Yeah, when mine suddenly appears in financial year seventeen eighteen. <laughs> yeah, what's this Hololens thing? And then you show the director, and they, they have a go, and they're like, "Yeah, this is cool. We'll keep this. Let's keep that project running." <laughs> <laughs> Superb. That sounds so cool. So, and that is about that for this episode. Again, finished on a high note. Thanks very much, Daz. I was asked about it. Thank you very much to everyone who is listening. I hope you uh, kind of keep up with the Game Awards. And like I say, I will kind of score us and let you know what the scores are um, next week. I promise I won't cook the books. And uh, so, uh, don't forget, you can keep up with us at gamersoflostbark.com. You can also find us on Facebook. On Twitter, we're at Lost Bark Pod. You can also find us on YouTube. We're also uh, available in the game is a lost park ps4 and xbox one club slash community as well so they're both kind of growing which is fantastic um darren where can we find you online sir yeah you can get me as wythomator on ps4 xbox one and twitch does a gamer on youtube and at does Whitsum on twitter fantastic for me i am a chess man on xbox live i'm ps hyphen chess man on the playstation network and i'm chess man uk on twitter and nintendo um don't forget if you have any feedback please send it to our email address that's feedback at games of lost also if you're feeling generous please leave us a review on itunes so that's about it i'm gonna go and kind of maybe get some coffee so i can stay up for the game awards so we'll catch you next week guys thank you very much bye bye bye